A junior from Lyford, Texas, and Cole Andrews. A junior from Jordanton, the tight end is Chase Potek, junior from West or Victoria West High School. Running back to Corey Willis, senior from Platonio. Of course, we'll see uh, Jacob Stone as well coming in. Relief, he actually gets more of the carries. He's from Smithson Valley. And the quarterback, fifth year senior out of Angleton, Texas, is Seth Cosby. Caden Masenko uh, will come in relief, uh, possibly. He did last week in the game against Wisconsin Oshkosh. The defense that the TLU offense will see on the other side as the Bulldogs come onto the field over on the east stands on the visitor side here at Perkelbach Field. And we'll look at the Southwestern Pirates defense for you. And we'll start with the defensive line, the defensive ends. Justin Zamora, a senior out of El Paso Chapman High School. And Jason Lund, a senior from Azel High School. Defensive tackles. Jalen Levine, sophomore from Houston North Shore, and Morian Williams Jack, a sophomore from Houston James Madison. Linebackers, Blaine Corkin, senior from the Woodlands, and Alec Gomez, a senior from McAllen Valley View. Defensive backs, the nickelback, Michael Justice, a junior from Sherman High School. Corners are Jamarcus Russell from West Orange State. He is a junior, and a Connell, a sophomore from San Antonio Central Catholic. Free safety is Ethan Mills, sophomore from Katie St. John, the 13th high school, and Peyton Ludeman from Austin Bowie. He is a senior. Southwestern offensive starters go like this on the offensive line. In the middle, the center is Eli Taylor, a sophomore from Shelbyville, Texas High School. Matt Gomez at one guard from Beeville Jones. He is a senior. And Josh Taylor, a junior from Richmond, Texas, George West or George Ranch High School. The tackle is Anderson Johnson. Senior from Cypress Springs High and Reed Robinson from Dripping Springs. He is a freshman. Receivers Mitchell Garrett, a junior from Magnolia High School. Dugan Sexton, a junior from Frisco Wakeland. And Grady Thompson, freshman from Dallas Woodrow Wilson. The tight end is Dominic Davila from Floresville High School. He is a junior. Running back is junior Colby Bartlett from Godley High School. And the quarterback, senior. Damian Gomez from McAllen Valley View. We'll also see Jalen Spriggs possibly in relief of Gomez here this evening. And finally, the TLU Bulldog defense will start up front on the defensive line. Defensive ends, Joshua Stanton from Houston Lamar. He is a senior. Christian Monroe, also a senior from College Station High School. And the nose tackle in the middle, Faustino Gonzalez, a senior, finishing out the triplet of seniors on the defensive line. For defensive coordinator Bo Gretsch, Faustino's from Lockhart High School. Linebackers Caleb Giles, senior from Houston Lamar. Christian Hart, also a senior from Brookshire, in, uh, at Brookshire High School in Katy. James Gibson, senior from Castroville, Medina Valley High School. And David Augustine rounds out the quartet of seniors for the linebacking core for the uh, Bulldogs. He's from Missouri City, Willow Ridge. And finally, the defensive back, senior Kalen Wilkerson. Is back there at cornerback. He's from Colleen Ellison. Jamario Thomas, sophomore from Jasper High School. The safety, strong safety, Troy Thomas Selly, freshman from Castroville, Cornerstone Christian, and Mason Hardy. And he's back on the team from Flynn, Texas, Norman G. High School. So there you have the starters for both the Bulldogs and the Pirates. Both teams looking to get their first win of the season. And Easton, any final pregame thoughts? I think for TLU to come out here and get their first win of the year, I think they're going to have to set the tone offensively. I think get Seth Cosby some easy throws early on, get Jacob Wallace involved, get Willis and Fortone involved as well in the offense. And I think for the defense, it's going to be takeaways. You know, they're going to want to throw the ball around the field a lot, and there's going to be a lot of opportunities for receptions. Mason Hardy, like you mentioned, is a ball back there. So I think if the DBs are locked in in their stances and ready to make plays on the ball, I think the Bulldogs can come out of here with a victory. Get the coin toss at the 50-yard line as the captains for both teams. You see Mason Hardy out there along with uh, DeCorey Willis for the uh, Bulldogs. And uh, let's listen in on uh, what's going on there at the 50-yard line.
So the Bulldogs win the toss, they'll take the ball to start things out here in Georgetown. Bulldogs, white uniforms, white on white here on the road, white jerseys, black numbers, white pants, gold stripe. Surrounded by two black stripes down the side of those pants, black helmets with TLU lined in gold on the sides, a gold stripe over the top. Southwestern, black on black, black jerseys, gold numbers, black pants with Wide gold stripes down the sides, black helmets. They've got that pirate logo on the left side, player numbers on the right in white, and a white stripe over the top. Weather, partly cloudy, 97 might drop into the 80s by the fourth quarter. Not much of a uh, wind, might, not much of a factor here in Georgetown tonight. Field turf surface here at Burkleback Field. Eagles in blue caps for the Georgetown Eagles in the south end zone, and Patriots in red caps in the north end zone for the east view patriots so we are just about ready to go we'll see that tlu boat bulldog offense to start things out here tonight and going back to that coin toss that might have been the first time i've seen a, a full-on mic out for the referees like we're in the nfl or something so they do so it. stepping up here in georgetown I like it and that's why we have a crowd mic for, for moments like those <laughs> so, you get to see seth cosby out here for the first drive of course, this Bulldog offense looks like it's got a lot of firepower this season. I mean, putting up a lot of points against a Division III powerhouse like Oshkosh in Wisconsin. So I'm excited what they do. And I think early in the season, every week, that offense slowly gets to find more of a rhythm. So I'm excited to see what we see here in a second. Jacob Fortone, Eugene Robinson back deep to receive the kick for the Bulldogs. They'll be defending the north Enzo, going left to right in front of us from our perspective here in the west press box. And the kicker, Charlie Fournier. For the Southwestern Pirates, has it teed up near the left hash at the 35-yard line. As we're awaiting the signal from the official to get things started here in Georgetown. We'll have some D3 football tonight here on KWED and on TLUBulldogs.com. Fortone moves forward, approaches the tee. This is a high, short kick up back and a call for a fair catch. And he'll make it at the 25-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will get things started. Is uh, Michael Puente with the fair catch. And Seth Cosby will lead the offense out on the field for the Bulldogs. See Cosby pick his way out on the field. Southwestern, this defense is a solid bunch up front. Let me get my notes out here real quick. They got a couple of standouts. Um, Malik McDonald had five tackles and two sacks back in week one over in, in California for Seth Western. Also, Alec Gomez, that linebacker, had nine tackles last week. So some playmakers on the Southwestern defense to look out for. So first and ten for the Bulldogs at their own 25-yard line. Cosby in the shotgun, play fake, throw to the far side, complete to receiver, gets around the defender. That's Jacob Wallace, the Marion Bulldog, and he'll dive forward to the 35-yard line. He has a first down. Getting the ball right over to Wallace quickly here. Going quick also after that first play, but just a quick stop around the Wallace one-on-one. -on -one. That's a nightmare over there for that corner. You're listening to Bulldog Football on KWED. Seguin, Chris Austin, and Easton Allen just underway. Bulldogs first and 10 from their own 36-yard line. Cosby shotgun running back to his left. Another play fake, fake, another throw out to the left side and complete along the sideline to Wallace again. He goes out of bounds, pushed out at the 42, picked up about seven. A little stiff on there that time on the corner. Wallace is just so big out there, 6'5", 215 on the outside. It's just a hard mat, hard cover for any Division three corner. And Wallace right now off to a hot start. Already two catches. They give him five yards on that play as he went out of bounds at the 41. Second down and five man in motion out of backfield towards the near side. That's for Tone. And here's a give to Corey Willis. And he'll go right and plow ahead for maybe two yards. Defense right there. First handoff for the Bulldog offense. Southwestern looked ready for it up front. A little read option maybe. Cosby gave it to Willis. Both Willis and Fortone out there right now, like you mentioned. Also Cole Andrews in the slot. He'll function at tight end and wide receiver. Was a quarterback originally here at TLU. DeCorey will go to the sideline. It'll be third down and three for the Bulldogs at their own 43-yard line. Cosby shotgun gets the snap throughout the flat complete and hit hard is Fortone, but he pushes forward across the 45 and he's going to have a first down. What an effort by Jacob. Yeah, Fortone just absorbed that. He's like a bowling ball out there. Strong lower body and he absorbed the contact and fought for that first down despite the big hit. Now, the Smith Valley product needed five yards. He was two yards from the marker. That ball got hit by a defender and able to push forward, pick up the first for the Bulldogs. 
TLU working no huddle. First and 10 now at their own 47-yard line on the right. Hash going left to right. Here's a give running back. Hole on the left side. This is for Tone. He gets tripped up, but he falls forward into, uh, te into uh, Southwestern Territory down at the 45. We really like the tempo the Bulldogs are playing with right now on this first drive. Not, not a, no, a lot of no huddle here early on. We see Fortone getting involved those last couple plays. And right now they're staying ahead of the chains. And second and short come, upcoming. So it'll be second down and about three. No huddle again. Cosby in the shotgun. Klosterman out far to the right. And Wallace out to the left. Give uh, to the running back right side. And plowing over a defender. Lowering his shoulder is to Corey Willis. He moves it ahead for about three yards. Going to be close to the first down. He's got it. First down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, the Southwestern front seven looks solid up front. But these, these Bulldog backs, they don't go down easy on first contact. And there you see why Willis getting that first down. And the Bulldogs move the sticks again. Chase Potek in there at the tight end position. He's in the slot on the left. No huddle. First and 10 Bulldogs at the Southwestern 43. Cosme Gunn, play fake, throw over to the left side, complete to his running back for Tone. He'll take it across or inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Check that. That's Chase Potek. Yeah. That's a gain of four yards. Another quick throw for Cosme. Nothing quite down the field just yet. A lot of short throws and some runs. You might be looking for maybe the next second and short for Cosme and, and Coach LaHue to drop a, a play action pass to the end zone maybe to catch the Southwestern defense off guard. They've got it second down and six at the Southwestern 39. Initial drive, no score here early on. Cosme looks right now, throws left, setting up a wide receiver screen to Wallace. Defense is there, and they bring him down at the line of scrimmage. A little wide receiver mid screen there. The blocks didn't quite develop like the Bulldogs wanted. Wallace might have gotten a yard. And now a third and five upcoming. Liam Phelan on the tackle for the Pirates. Again, no huddle as the Bulldogs make some substitutions. Cole Andrus into the ball game. Potek both lined up on the right side, far out to the right. It's Caleb Klosterman, Wallace far out to the left. One running back to Cosby's left. Back to throw out the shotgun, pump fake. Now drifting towards the left, throws down the middle of the field and in and out of the hands of his intended target. Looked like Potek at the sticks. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, that was Micah Justice, number 30, on the coverage for Southwestern. It was all over Potek. And tough, tough angle to fit that ball in from Cosby. Fourth and five, the offense still out there right now. They're kind of in no man's land, so I wouldn't be surprised if they go for this one. Absolutely. Fourth and five, Easton at the 38-yard line of the Pirates, and yes, the offense staying on the field. The running back, Jacob Fortone. Cosby again working shotgun, two wide outs to the right, one to the left, working on the left hash. Cosby calling out the signals, gets the snap, back the throw, looking, he'll throw towards the left side, and incomplete. Caleb Klosterman tried to dive for that one at the 26-yard line, but it was out in front of him, and the Bulldogs turn it over on downs. That was actually a tough throw for Cosby. I mean, it was across the field. That might have been a 30- or 40-yard throw from where Cosby was around the 50 to make that pass to the 25 across the across the field. So a tough one there. Klosterman just not able to come up with it. And Southwestern will get the ball, the ball for the first time with pretty good field position. Now they'll take it over at their own 38-yard line. So the Bulldogs come up empty on their first drive. They turn it over on downs, and it'll be first and 10 for Damian Gomez and the Southwestern Pirate offense. Gomez in the shotgun, running back to his right, takes the snap. Here's a give to the left side. The running back takes it across the 40 and dropped at the 41-yard line, picked up about three, looking for the number. That's Colby Bartlett, the starting running back. Yeah, we'll see a lot of Bartlett and we'll run on first down there, but as we know, this Southwestern offense likes to air it out. So we'll see what they go here on second and medium with the three wide receiver set. Second down and seven. They're working between the hashes, going right to left at their own 41. Gomez shotgun. Give to Bartlett up the middle. Little hole. He gets hit as he's met by Caleb Giles there at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for a couple. Yeah, we're going to call Caleb Giles' name a lot tonight. He might be the best player on this defense, the leader, too, as a senior in that linebacking core, veteran group like we talked about. And that sets up a third and medium here. Money down for the TLU defense to get a stop. Third and six for the Pirates at their own 42-yard line. They're going to spread things out somewhat tight. Four wide receivers set, two wide, re wide receivers to each side. Gomez in the shotgun. Gomez, that is, he throws it over the middle, has a receiver complete. And it's No, it's knocked out, incomplete, as flags come down in the offensive backfield. The uh, Bulldogs pick up a loose yeah. ball thinking it was a fumble, but they blow it dead. A lot, of, a lot going on on that play. I think it might be a hold in the backfield, and then I think they ruled the play dead, incomplete. But I thought he might have had that catch at first. And it is going to be a hold on Southwestern. So 
that'll, that'll back them up and make it a third and longer. Third and 15, as you heard the official there with the call. So the mark off 10 yards and put it back to the Southwestern 33-yard line. At least we think they will. Well, well that, there you go, Coach LaHue declining the penalty. So instead of third and 15, it'll be fourth and five, and the punt team's coming out for the Pirates. Might as well make it fourth down. Southwestern now forced to punt, so Bulldog defense gets off the field. So it'll be Charlie Fournier handles both the kicking and punting duties for the Pirates back deep at his own 28-yard line to receive the snap and heading back in the other direction. Back deep for the Bulldogs is Mason Hardy. 10-13 to go here first quarter. No score between the Bulldogs and the Southwestern Pirates. Here's the snap. And the kick is off as flags fly at the line of scrimmage. Nice spiral, and Hardy going to call for a fair catch at the 16-yard line. We'll see what the flag is all about. Could either be a formation call on the Pirates or maybe TLU lined up off sides. It was fourth and six, so. It was right when that ball was snapped. The flag came out on that southwestern sideline. Pretty good punt. We'll see if it'll hold up, though. We'll have to re-kick it, maybe. Here on the home sideline. At Burkle Bach Field. Five players in the backfield, kicking team. That penalty will be enforced five yards from the end of the kick. First down. So you hear, you hear the explanation from the referee. Legal formation against the Pirates. And they'll mark off five from where Mason Hardy made that fair catch at the 16. So they'll move it to the 21 yard line. So a couple early penalties here for the Pirates. Now had that hold earlier and now. Special teams penalty, so I know the Bulldogs in favor in the penalty battle, but now long field ahead inside the 25 with, Most, two, with two people in the backfield. They'll start at the 22, 41-yard punt by Fournier. Cosby in the gun, sends a man in motion towards the far side and to give to his running back to Corey Willis, going left Corey off Willis tackle, going and he takes it outside for a couple of yards up to the 24. Outside zone to Willis. Fortone not out there right now. It's Willis in the backfield as well as another running back for the Bulldogs. Try to get a number. That's Weston Guzman in the backfield. Well, they make some substitutions as Guzman comes in. And he'll be to Cosme's right as the Bulldogs work shotgun. They will run the jet sweep towards the near sideline and up to the 30. Taking in, I believe that's Chase Potek. Yes, indeed. He'll be a couple yards short of the first down. A little jet sweep there to the slot receiver. Yeah, third and short upcoming. Might look for that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Jacob Wallace against the smaller corner, Aiden O'Connell for Southwestern. So third and two for the Bulldogs at their own 30. As you mentioned, Easton. Wallace lined up to the far left. All on an island out there. Cosby shotgun. Takes a snap, play peg, looking towards his left. He'll throw towards Wallace, who's open. He's got it at the 45, and he'll be brought down at the 39-yard line of the Pirates. And he went in that direction, yeah. saw him all by himself. First down. Actually, was that Jacob? Or is that a, that's, that's Jacob. A, okay, yeah. so. Right on cue, Wallace one-on-one -on -one against O'Connell. They just throw it up. He had some separation, too. Good throw from Cosme. Wallace makes the play one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a big gain there to get the Bulldogs in southwestern territory. So they mark it at the 40, first and 10 for the Bulldogs. No huddle, working left hash, going left to right. No score in this ball game. Here's a running back, and that might be Guzman. He'll take it inside the 40 and gets tripped up or checked that. That's Jacob Fortone. Gets, gets about three yards on the game, down to the 37. Yeah, Bulldogs rotating three running backs here in this first quarter as Guzman along with Fortone and Willis. Right now it's just Fortone. Jacob Wallace on the sideline now. Just two, three wide receivers set with Cole Andrews. At the tight end position, second and medium upcoming with eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. Bulldogs have it at the Pirate 38-yard line. Cosby Gunn running back to his left, give to the running back. No, he fakes it. Now he'll roll left, and he'll take it upfield, takes it inside the 35, gets brought down at the 32-yard line. Got about four on that play. Some creativity there now from Coach LeHue in the offense. little RPO as Cosby kept it. Could have had the option to throw it to Andrews, but just kept it and took the easy yards. So now third and manageable upcoming third and three for the Bulldogs they've got it at the Pirate 33 yard line see uh, Caleb Camarillo check into the ball game for the Bulldogs he'll line up far out to the left Cosby in the gun he's got split backs with him 
Now running back in motion out of the backfield towards the near side. Cosby takes the snap, rolling right. Here comes pressure, throws it downfield, and incomplete in front of his diving receiver on the play. That was Jacob Fortone at the nine-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. A lot of man-to-man -man coverage here early from Southwestern. Trying to be physical with these wide receivers as looking for Patek. That was pretty good coverage. And now another fourth down and decision time. Once again, the Bulldogs, of course, didn't convert that last one. Let's see if they can reverse their fortunes here. So the offense staying on the field as the crowd here in Georgetown getting to their feet, trying to make some noise for their team here on the home side of the field. Cosby Gunn running back to his left, two wide outs, right one to the left, fourth and three. Seth gets the snap, gets to his running back, going around the left side. This is for Tone. He's going to dive forward, and I'm not sure if he has it. No, he doesn't. He'll be about a yard short, and the Bulldogs turn it over on downs once again. Flag is on the out on the play. Well, though. hold on, Came yeah. Late. Fortone had that one-on-one -on -one he wants on the outside and wasn't able to shake the defender. Good tackle in the open field. He was exactly a yard short. Let's see what the call is, though. Pirates pointing in the direction of the Bulldogs. And it is against the Bulldogs. The Pirates will decline the penalty, so the Bulldogs turn it over on downs on successive drives here in the first quarter. Two drives so far, and, and they've been unable to convert on fourth down 0 for 2 now on the evening so far. Almost on the same part of the field too around the 30 40 yard line area so a tough break for the Bulldog offense they're moving the ball well they just have stalled out these first two possessions still trying to find their rhythm here early in the season and now the Southwestern offense will come back out on the field for their second drive first and ten for the Pirates now at their own 31 going right to left in front of us south to north two wideouts left one to the right here's a throw to the left side and this ball is deflected is it picked off yes intercepted on a deflection by the Bulldogs who got it you might give Caleb Giles the assist there. He got his hand in there, and I think a defensive I think it was lineman. Jonathan Cooper. Mm -hmm. The yeah. nose tackle. It bounced uh, forward as Caleb Giles, defending on the play, knocked that ball back, and Cooper, the defensive lineman, had the ball fall into his hands, and the Bulldogs get a turnover. Caleb Giles created some opportunistic plays for that TLU defense, and then yeah, Cooper right there on the spot. Quick hands there to make that play, and the Bulldogs, it's almost like they just converted the fourth down. So first and 10 now for the Bulldogs on the turnover at the Pirate 32. Here's Cosby in the offense. Shotgun. Give to the running back straight up the middle, pushing the pile forward to the 30. They'll give him forward progress to the 29. And that's to Corey Willis on the carry. Gain of about three. Yeah, running the ball here early on hasn't been quite as easy as I think this Bulldog offense came in with. The Southwestern front's pretty solid. The D lineman set in the line of scrimmage pretty well. It's been the past game, especially to Jacob Wallace, that's been working here early. The Bulldogs might look to go back to him here this next play. Second down and seven for TLU at the Southwestern 29. Cosby, play fake, throwing left. Mm -hmm. He's got Wallace complete at the 15, and he'll fall forward down to the 12 with a first down. Bulldogs in the red zone. I promise I don't know the TLU playbook. I'm just <laughs> calling it out. You called it, Easton. <laughs> nope. Looking for Wallace. I think it's his fourth or fifth catch already in this first quarter as he's just been a matchup nightmare on the outside against O'Connell. So now Bulldogs in the red zone with both their top backs in the backfield. Jacob, former uh, classmate with you there at Marion High School mm -hmm. back in the day. All right, first to 10 for the TLU Bulldogs at the Southwestern 12. Here's Willis going left. He'll lower his shoulder and will be brought, be brought down at the 11, a gain of one. A short gain there, and now this is a – Big part of the field, the Bulldogs got to be successful when you got to get put six points on the board when you're in the red zone, not three. As they're just outside the 10 right now, still got the yard to gain at the two, so not quite second and goal just yet. No score between the Bulldogs and Pirates, 548 and counting. Left to go here in the first quarter. Eugene Robinson checks into the ballgame. He played safety last year, he's now mm -hmm. listed as a tight end. Second and nine for the Bulldogs. Cosme Gunn running back to his right. Here comes Robinson. Jet sweep going towards the right. Cuts inside. Takes it inside the 10. And he'll run into a pile at the eight and push forward down to the six-yard line. Nice job by Robinson just getting up field. I think a lot of times those jet sweeps, receivers just love to keep going on outside. But Robinson cut it up field just to get what he could. And makes it another third and manageable for this Bulldog offense. Needing to get some points here and get, this, get the first points up on the scoreboard. The third and about four. Ball at the Southwestern six-yard line. 
have a sneaky suspicion who this ball might go to on third now. Well, he's lined up way to the left if you're talking about Jacob Wallace. Far out to the left. Third and four. Cosby shotgun running back to his right. Now he's looking right. Pump fake. Holding. Looks. Throws. Has Klosterman inside the five. Down to the one. Doesn't get in, but he's got a first down. Smart play there from Cosby. He could have forced it into the end zone, but I mean, like I mentioned earlier, they just they just got to get the first down. It's not goal to go, goal to go just yet. So good job by Klosterman knowing the sticks, getting that first down. They're out the one, and now first and goal. Maybe a jumbo package now for the Bulldogs. First and goal at the one yard line. Weston Guzman checks in. Jacob Fortone is out there, and Cosby still going to work out the shotgun pistol formation. He's got two. Oh, now a timeout called by Coach Neil LeHue, and the Bulldogs will take it as well. 4.20 left to go first quarter. No score between Southwestern and TLU. This is Bulldog football on KWED and TLUbulldogs.com. Bulldogs.com. The Taylor Company is a proud sponsor of Texas Lu says go Bulldogs. For Lloyd's break and alignment, call 372-5510. That's 372-5510. First and goal for the Bulldogs. Taking a handoff and taking it into the end zone is Jacob Fortone on the one-yard plunge, and the Bulldogs are on the board. Fortone picking up right where he left off. He likes the stadium here in Georgetown. Had the game-winning score last year and puts the first points up on the board in this one. It's 6 nothing Bulldogs. Absolutely right, Easton. He scored the last two touchdowns in this stadium between these two schools. <laughs> scored with 14 seconds last year. Bulldogs showing a, a formation here where they might go for two. And now let's see if they change things up. And they will. Joaquin Rodriguez, the place kicker, on now for the extra point attempt. One-yard run, Jacob Fortone gets the Bulldogs on the board. Here's the snap ball placed down, kick is up, and the kick is good. So 4-16 here in the first quarter. Bulldogs on the board first. It's TLU 7, Southwestern nothing. And we'll take a timeout. This is Bulldog football on KWED. On KWED. Taylor Tree Farm, a family business in Seguin, Texas, specializes in locally grown trees. Their farm is teeming with native oaks of all kinds, plus cedar elms and desert willows. Ranging from 1 to 30 gallons, they've got trees of all sizes. Each tree is nurtured from locally gathered acorns and seeds that are germinated and grown in their greenhouse until they're ready for transfer. At Ehlers Tree Farm, they're not just growing trees, they're growing your future green spaces. Visit AhlersTreeFarm.com to learn more. Bulldogs take advantage of an interception. They drive it 32 yards and cap it off. One yard run by Jacob Fortone. Extra point good. 416 left to go here. First quarter. TLU 7. Southwestern nothing as Joaquin Rodriguez tees it up at the 35. He'll be kicking north to south here at Berkel Backfield. Three men deep at the five yard line for. Southwestern short kick and it'll be returned and dropped momentarily. Uh -oh. Still on the ground at the 15 and TLU falls on it. Blaine Corkin muffed that kickoff. High kick from Rodriguez and it was rolling around there and TLU recovers the ball. Not only was he bobbling it, then he was trying to just recover so quickly that he just pushed the ball more forward out of his, out of his area and there was no chance that Southwestern was going to recover that one. And TLU gets a gift on the kickoff as they're right back in position to put some more points on the board. They'll have it at the Pirate 12-yard line 
First and 10, so short field for the Bulldogs, and Seth Cosby and the offense will come back out onto the field. 4-11 here left to go in the first quarter. Bulldogs up 7 to nothing, looking to add to their lead. Cosby shotgun, two wide outs left, one to the right. And he's got a running back on his left hip. And he'll give it to that running back. That's Fortone. He's inside the 10, down to the six-yard line is Jacob with a gain of six. Nice little jump cut there to get upfield from Fortone. Got a few extra yards past the linebacker. Good gain there on first down. And once again, the Bulldogs just need a few yards to gain to get the first down. It's, they're not quite in goal to go situation once again. They need the two yard line, second down and four. Fortone still in there at the running back position on Cosby's right as he works out of the gun. It'll be a give to Jacob. He'll go up the middle. No, it's, it's uh, Cosby with the play fake. He goes around the right side. And he takes it into the end zone for the touchdown. He even fooled me. Yeah, nice play from Seth Cosby there. RPO again, and once again, he fakes it to, to Cole Andrews and just keeps it himself, fooled the Southwestern defense and, and, up, me. and us in the booth. <laughs> but Cosby punches it in, and the Bulldogs take advantage of the opportunity right away. And just like that, it's 14-0 TLU pending the extra point. So Caleb uh, Camarillo, the holder, as the uh, Bulldogs spread things out here on the extra point attempt, and now they'll come in tight and kick the extra point. So Joaquin Rodriguez comes onto the field. Rodriguez, senior kicker. 3.35 left to go. Looking to add the extra point here for the Bulldogs. Ball placed down, kick up, kick is good. 3.35 left to go in the first quarter. It's now TLU 14 and Southwestern nothing. This is Bulldog football on KWED and TLUBulldogs.com. Bulldogs.com. Anders Pierce Realty knows this area about as well as anyone. From Seguin to New Braunfels to San Antonio or San Marcos, their expertise has proven invaluable for their clients. Anders Pierce Realty is here for all your real estate needs. They can help whether your interest lies with a house, lot, acreage, ranch, farm, office, warehouse, storage, or anything else. They'll do their best to ensure that you are satisfied with all your real estate needs. Learn more today. Visit AndersPierce.com. That's AndersPierce.com. Davila's Barbecue has been providing quality eats for Seguin since 1959. Grilling and smoking choice cuts of meat to the perfect level of tenderness is their business. The sausage is homemade, the ribs fall off the bone, and, well, the peach cobbler is the perfect ending to any meal. You can find Davila's Barbecue on Kingsbury Street near Guadalupe Street. But did you also know that you can find Davila's Barbecue on Facebook and Twitter or visit their website at davilasbbq.com? Bulldogs take advantage of an interception, then a muff on a kickoff return. They've scored two touchdowns. It's 14-0 TLU. Here's the kickoff. And drifting back to receive it is the return man at the 4, up to the 10, and dropped at the 15. Good coverage there by the Bulldogs. Right now TLU dominating in all three phases. Offense looks good. The defense has gotten stops when they need to, creating turnovers. And the special teams doing a pretty good job right now as well. 3.31 left to go here in the first quarter. Bulldogs off to a great start here, leading 14 to nothing. TLU over the Southwestern Pirates here at Berkelbach Field in Georgetown on a Saturday night. So glad you could be with us here on KWED and TLUBulldogs.com. Chris Austin along with Easton Allen, first and 10 for the Pirates now, starting this drive at their own 15-yard line. Gomez, the quarterback, shotgun. Sends a man in motion in front of him. It's a jet sweep going to the left. Cutting inside is the running back across the 20, and he's spun down at the 22-yard line. Coleman Robertson with the carry, picked up eight. Good play on first down there for the Pirates, trying to get some confidence back as things have kind of gotten out of hand here the last couple minutes. See what the offense can do here with the second and short. Second and two for the Pirates. Working left hash, going right to left. They've got it at their own 23-yard line. Snap back to the quarterback, play fake, throw down the middle, nearly picked off, and it is picked off, intercepted on the deflection. That is Jamario Thomas. Now he's dodging tacklers. He'll take it inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. Late flag, but that might have came after the, the interception. Turnover, yeah. Another just bobbled, tipped interception that the Bulldogs come up with. They've just been all over the field in this first half. 
So if this stands, it'll be three successive possessions for Southwestern where they turned it over. Not really a possession on the kickoff muff, but an interception on their last drive. And here's the call. So it does happen after the interception, so they'll mark it off after the play, but the Bulldogs will take it over again in Southwestern territory. We said in the pregame, you know, turnovers are going to be huge for the Bulldogs. They got three takeaways in the first quarter. These last three possessions, like you mentioned, Chris, and not as great starting field position, but they're still in pirate territory, and the Bulldogs are looking to score their third straight, score in the third straight possession. They'll have a first and 10 at the Southwestern 39-yard line. 2.49 left to go first quarter. Bulldogs up 14 to nothing. Cosme with two running backs split with them in the backfield. On the right hash, far out to the left is the wide receiver, Jacob Wallace. Klosterman to the right. Here's a run going right. It's for Tony. He gets cut down in the backfield. As uh, coming in there was Blake Corkin from his linebacker position shooting the gap, and he stops the running back for two for a loss of two. And nowhere to go there for, for Jacob on the outside. Try to find a little bit of running room, but it was closed off over there from Southwestern. Like I said, this run defense has done a great job. It's just been the pass defense that's hurt them so far, along with the turnovers, too. So again, Wallace lined up far out to the left, two wide outs to the right, moving along. The Replay. line flags come down off sides, and Seth going to air it out right side for Klosterman over his head out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Off sides will be the call. On TLU, you call, or on uh, Southwestern, you called it Easton free play, and Seth goes deep. They'll get five yards, even though the pass incomplete. Yeah, looking for Klosterman one on one. Even Caleb Klosterman, not the biggest guy. Not two guys offsides. Yeah. Marion Williams, Jack, and Jalen Levine for the Pirates. Replay the down. It'll be second down and seven as the ball's placed down at the Pirate 36 yard line. Like I was mentioning, these southwestern corners, not the tallest on the outside on both sides. Even Klosterman has a height advantage over there, and he might only be about six foot. Weston Guzman, Jacob Fortone check in at the running back position for the Bulldogs. Now Wallace lined up to the right side as the Bulldogs work it. Left hash out in, in motion to the left. Goes Weston, and now hits Cosby back to throw. Looking for Guzman. He leaps and makes the catch at the 12-yard line. Oh, the referee oh now they're going to the say zone. incomplete. He didn't come down with the ball. Nice effort there by Weston. Guzman had the leap for that one. Had a defender behind him mm -hmm. and just couldn't come down with it. And a pretty good throw from Cosby, too. You know, keep on that back shoulder away from the safety that was creeping down. I thought he had the catch as well, but must have hit the ground. So now third and down. Upcoming once again, kind of in no man's land for TLU, but you know you could see a run here to get ready for an easier fourth down. Already up 14 to nothing, taking advantage of some pirate miscues. Got an interception on the last drive for Southwestern. Third and seven. Cosby back to throw. Has time. Now here comes pressure up the middle. He's gonna step up and he'll be swallowed up by the defense at the 40 yard line. Keenan Go with the play. It's gonna bring a fourth down. Um, big stop on third down there for Southwestern. They needed a momentum play like that to get going. Their defense provides that with the stop, forcing TLU to likely punt here. So it'll be fourth and ten, and we do see the punting unit come on. Now Cameron Welch, the New Braunfels Canyon product. Will line up back deep to receive the snap. And a couple of Pirates back at the ten for Southwestern. Cameron awaits the snap, gets it chest high. Here comes pressure. He gets it away. End under and high kick. And this is going to bounce at the four and go into the end zone. Do they knock it out? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Who is that in the end zone on one hop? Got the ball. Well, actually just batted the ball back. It was K.J. Wilkerson who was three yards deep in the end zone. Ball bounced to him. He jumped in the air and knocked it out of the end zone. They down it at the three-yard line. Great job. Great. Again, the special team is showing up, too, for Tealy. Yes. They're, they're dominating in all three phases right now. Down in that one inside the five. Oh, and now. Now they're going to take it out man. to the 20 because I wasn't sure if he could do that. <laughs> I know you could do that in the NFL, but yeah. I don't think you could do that in college football, so they will make that a safety. As soon as the ball breaks the plane in college ball, that's considered a touchback. you got to love the effort there. Though. Yeah, in the NFL, that would have been down at the three. So, you know, if K.J. plays on Sundays, that's a great play. So first and 10. 
for the Pirates taking over at their own 20-yard line. And now we got whistles and what with 31 seconds on the clock. Official stopping play here momentarily. Not sure if there's a clock issue or what we have. Yes, there is. So you hear the referee announce to the crowd. He wants 44 seconds on the clock, and he gets it. First and, first and 10 from the 20 for the Pirates. Gomez all by himself. Or, yes, it is Gomez. A throw across the middle complete at the 33-yard line. That's Mitchell Garrett with the catch, and he gets tackled right away, but he has a first down. Yeah, big hit there. That was Troy Tomaselli. Or Tomaselli on the tackle, but nice catch made, and it's a first down for the Pirates. Yeah, Troy, the strong safety. Hit the receiver hard, but he hung on first and 10 for Southwestern at their own 34. No huddle. And snap back to the quarterback. This is Jalen Spriggs. It's a new quarterback, and he'll take it straight up the middle up to the 40-yard line. I wasn't sure if Gomez or if that was a new quarterback, and it is a new quarterback, Jalen Spriggs. And he picks up about six on that quarterback keeper. Yeah, we talked in the pregame. We might see both quarterbacks there. Spriggs looks to be more the running quarterback. They bring him in for that first time just to get the quarterback keeper. See if he has the arm on him, too. It's second and four upcoming at the 40, and he's still in there with an empty backfield. Yeah, empty backfield, four wide receivers set. He's back at the 35, takes the snap, fakes a run. He'll throw it across the middle, complete to receiver. He's upended into TLU territory down at the 44-yard line. Graydon Thompson with the catch and a first down. Nice couple of plays for the Pirates to end the first quarter as we'll head to the second with TLU up 14. And we'll take a break. You're listening to Bulldog Football and KWED and streaming at TLUBulldogs.com. Hey, boss, you got a First and 10 for the Pirates. They've got the ball at the TLU 43-yard line. Snap back to the quarterback, Spriggs. He'll throw it towards the left side, complete to receiver. Wide receiver screen. He'll take it inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. That's Colby Bartlett, actually the running back on the reception. So with Jaden Spriggs in there, the Pirates finding some rhythm offensively as Spriggs bringing a spark to this offense and they're moving the ball down the field right now yeah starting quarterback damian gomez taken out after two interceptions on deflections early mm -hmm. on in this ball game second down and four for southwestern it's spriggs in the shotgun wildcat will take it around the left side and score it inside the 35 down to the 34 about a yard short of the first down it'll be third down so third and short upcoming big play up coming for this tlu defense a chance to hold southwestern here might be four down territory but Want to stop any signs of the Pirates gaining some momentum offensively right here. Everybody for Southwestern looking towards the near sideline here for the play. They've got 18 seconds on the play. Clock third down and one at the TLU 34-yard line. Best offensive drive so far of the evening for Southwestern. They're down 14 to nothing. Spriggs all alone in the shotgun with four wide receivers to the each side. Calling out the signals, gets the snap, and we got whistles and what? Ooh, the play clock went down to zero. Maybe a delay a game here. So we get the call. False no, false start. Third, down. third and one turns into third and six now for the Pirates as they place the ball back to the TLU 39. And that's big because before on the third and two, you could go with anything. The playbook's wide open. Now third and six, the Bulldogs can maybe bring in their – Third down packages to prevent the pass here because 
Wouldn't expect a run now from Southwestern. So the Bulldogs may be coming with a blitz here. They got four down linemen. Everybody lined up pretty tight, and here comes pressure. And Spriggs gets it away. It's a it's a screen, but the defense right there tackling the running back Sam Johnson for a loss of one. It'll be fourth down. So the Bulldogs and defensive coordinator Bo Gretsch with the blitz on that play. The Pirates lose a yard. Looks like they're going to send out the punting team. It'll be fourth and eight. Yeah, didn't get close enough to probably feel comfortable to go for that one. Now they're just trying to pin the Bulldogs deep in their own territory. But the TLU defense does their job. They get off the field. Mason Hardy back deep at his own 10-yard line to receive this punt from Charlie Fournier. He's back at his own 45-yard line. Fourth and eight for the Pirates. At the TLU 40, nice defensive stop here by the Bulldogs. Here's the snap, no rush, and Fournier gets it away. It's a high kick, and Hardy will call for the fair catch and make it at the 10-yard line. So Bulldogs will go back out on offense, up 14 to nothing, 12-34 left to go. So the Bulldogs have had a few short fields the last time, last few times we've seen them on offense. Now a more traditional setup here, 90 yards to go at the 10. Big possession here to kind of reestablish their control on this game after you saw Spriggs give some life to Southwestern. So now we'll see what Cosme and the offense can do here. Yeah, well, good job by that Bulldog defense to stiffen up mm -hmm. after a couple big plays by that Pirate offense. First and 10 for the Bulldogs now at their own 10-yard line going south to north, right to left in front of us. Cosby shotgun running back to his left, two wideouts right, one to the left, gets the snap, gives the four tone around the right side, takes it across the 12 to the 14, picks up four, before he stood up there by Jamarcus Rose, or Jamarcus Ross, the cornerback gain. They're going to give him five as they mark it at the 15. Yeah, nice gain on first down there for Fortone. Once again, the Bulldogs at their best when they're staying ahead of the sticks here on these early downs, making second and third down much more easier for them. Corey Willis checks back into the ball game. Caleb Klosterman out there. He's going to wind out, line up wide to the left. Jacob Wallace wide to the right. Bulldogs will send Corey Willis in motion towards the near side out of the backfield. Now give to Fortone around the right side. He gets stood up and pushed out of bounds for a loss of three on the play. Peyton Ludeman, strong yeah. safety, knocking Jacob out of bounds. A lot of pirates in the box there. Like you said, the safety out there. The pursuit was excellent on that play and backs up the Bulldogs a little bit here. So now third and seven upcoming. Obvious passing down here for Cosme. Look at Jacob forward progress to the 13. Still lost two, so third down and seven for the Bulldogs at their own 13 at yard line. Four wide receiver set here for Seth Cosby. Two wide outs to each side. He's got a running back on his right hip. Gets the shotgun snap. Here comes pressure. Now he'll throw it across the middle. Is it caught? I believe so. There's a fight between a Bulldog and a Pirate. And let's see who they're going to say has the ball here. Still no signal from the official as they're uh, – Trying to sort it out, both those team, both those players wrestling on the field, and I think they're going to give it to Jacob Fortone on the reception, but he's going to be a yard short. Yeah, that was a fight for the ball there, not only trying to fight for that first down, but also fighting for possession. Yeah, Fortone got that pass, and now fourth and one, and yeah, the Bulldogs are going to have to punt. So not going to take any chances here, even though it's fourth and short. They're deep in their own territory at their own 19. So again, the Cameron or the uh, Canyon a Cougar. Cameron Welch comes out. Canyon Cougar Cameron. There you go. Out in punt formation. We got two guys back deep for the Pirates at their own 40. Welch gets the snap. Here's the kick. End under end. And drifting back is the return man. Way back to the 31. Catches it going backwards. And he's going to be tackled at the 20 yard line. So great punt by Cameron Welch. Mm -hmm. Sends the return man back deep. And that was. That was Colby Bartlett, actually the running back. He caught it over the shoulder at the 31. His momentum carried him all the way back to the 20-yard line, and the Bulldogs bring him down at the 22. About a 60-yard punt there from Welch. I mean, he boomed that one, maybe maybe more, having him drop back the return man. So great punt. Again, the special team's doing a good job for TLU, helping them get ahead of the, ahead of the play on offense and defense. And now Pirates backed up a bit here on this next possession. 51 yards officially on that punt by Cameron Welch, and he flips the field. So first and 10 for the Pirates, and let's see who the quarterback it is. Spriggs in relief of Damian Gomez in the Wildcat. Now back to throw. Nobody in the backfield with him. He's got time. Now he'll tuck in and run. Flags come down behind the play, takes it across the 25, outside the numbers, tackle from behind at the 32, but we may have a holding call 
on the Pirates. Yeah, one of the tackles there for Southwestern definitely grabbed a bit too much of the jersey of a TLU pass rusher. And now a late flag from the near sideline coming uh, from the uh, rear official. Mm -hmm. So two flags on this play, and this look, looks like one after the play. And they, they might be both on Southwestern as that one came right from the sideline. Maybe something a coach said or something. So Side judge here on this side at the 45-yard line throwing that flag. And let's get the call. Well, we'll wait as the officials will get together and discuss this. See, we've got two penalties on the play and see what they're going to decide here. 10.08 left to go here. First half. TLU up 14 to nothing. And uh, let's get the call from the referee. So it looks like those uh, penalties are going to cancel each other mm -hmm. out. A couple of 15-yard penalties on each team, and they'll mark it where the receiver was tackled at the 34-yard line of Southwestern. It's a first down. So after all that, still a first down yeah. for the Pirates. <laughs> but, yeah, the coach on the sideline there got into it with the official. So not surprised about that call, but first and 10 for the Pirates, and Spriggs still in there under control. Joe Austin, the coach for the Pirates in his 11th year. First and 10 for the Pirates. Here's Spriggs throwing towards the far sideline. Complete as a receiver. Wide out. Screen. He'll take it across the 41. And is tackled there. Gain of about seven on the play. And that's the running back, Colby Bartlett, on the reception and run. Second down and three. So the Pirates staying ahead of the sticks here early. Spriggs, a lot of empty backfields for him. On these snaps, not many running backs have been to his side. So that's kind empty. of yeah, it's kind of like a wildcat formation with him mm -hmm. by himself in that uh, backfield. He takes a snap here and runs himself, takes it across the 45, across the 50, and finally brought down in TLU territory at the 47 yard line. He's got a first down. Yeah, Coach Austin and these Pirates are figuring something out with having Spriggs in the game, taking the snaps. As yeah, that wild, that kind of unique wildcat formation. Even though it is still with the quarterback, they're doing a lot of running and it's. Kind of had the TLU defense guessing here. They got to come up with a stand right here as they're entered Bulldog territory. Yeah, no running back there in uh, the backfield with Spriggs. He's got an H back on the right side and four wide outs and a tight end to the left. Takes the snap, looks over. Now he's going to throw over the middle, complete at the 35 to the 30 and up ended, brought down at the 29 uh, yard line. I believe that's Garrett Davis Meyer. Or is that Sam Johnson? Sam Johnson, the H back with the reception. He's got a first down. And, Chris, that's the second time they've faked the quarterback run. Then Spriggs just pulls it back, having a that entire front seven is now out of position. Then they get another first down out of it. So Spriggs, again, all alone in the backfield, working out of the shotgun, the quarterback. Two wide outs left, two uh, to the right. First and ten for the Pirates at the TLU 29-yard line. Working between the hashes, going left to right. Pirates in black, Bulldogs in white tonight. Here's the snap. Spriggs back to throw. Here comes pressure. Gets away from one tackle. Throws it deep down the field. And in and out of the hands of his intended target, Graydon Thompson. Five yards deep in the end zone. There was a TLU defender there. Maybe distracted him from catching that ball. Might have been Mason Hardy. Or no, actually that was Troy Tomaselli. Yeah. Tomaselli, I thought he timed it. I thought that would have been an interception at first. Goes through his hands, and that might have been their – the reason that Thompson couldn't come up with it. Thompson, one of the top wideouts on this Pirates team, unable to make the, the big play, and it'll bring up second down. Second down and 10 for the Pirates at the TLU 28-yard line. Again, all alone in the backfield in the shotgun is the quarterback Spriggs. Gets the snap, rolling right, setting up a screen as Johnson at the 32 inside the 30, outside to the 25, inside to the inside the 20-yard line as he's pushed out of bounds along that far sideline. At the 17-yard line, that's a first down for the Pirates. First time entering the, the red zone is this Southwestern offense. Still trailing 14-0, down two scores. But making some noise right now. This Bulldog defense got to come up with a stop. Yeah, they did on the last drive. Spriggs has been a spark for this Pirate offense. Two H-backs to each side. Two wide outs right, one to the left. Man in motion towards the 
near side to the far side, and now it's Spriggs going straight up the middle as he takes the snap and takes it to the 15. Got about two yards on that play. It'll be second down and eight. Looks like DJ Lewis was the tackler there for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs rotating a lot of guys in right now, keeping this defense fresh as Mason Hardy exits right there. A lot of front seven guys rotating in and out as well, so Bulldogs trying to clamp down here, defending their own end zone. Yeah, temperatures near 100 at kickoff here in Georgetown tonight. Still in the upper 90s here at sunset. Second down and eight for the Pirates at the TLU 15. Man in motion. They're going to fake the jet sweep, and here comes Spriggs up the middle, takes it to the line, and just runs into a bunch of white shirts for no gain. Bulldogs crowding things there that time, and coming off the pile is the defensive end, Grayson Kowalski. He was right in the middle of that. Yeah, Kowalski all over that one. Third and long now upcoming. Bulldogs a chance to get off the field, force that field goal to keep a two-score lead perhaps as expect the Bulldogs to send pressure here. And third and eight for the Pirates at the TLU 15-yard line. Now running back in the backfield, this time with Spriggs to his right. Tight formation with four wideouts. Spriggs back to throw out the shotgun. Pressure coming. He'll roll left. Throws it complete inside the 10, down to the 8, and finally pushed out of bounds is the receiver with a first down. And yeah, that was Thompson again. Graydon Thompson just coming on that crosser right over the middle, and he nearly scored, that, scored on that play, trying to stay in bounds to tip to the sideline. But it's first and goal, Southwestern. Takes it out of bounds at the 6-yard line. First and goal now for the Pirates. Sprague still the quarterback, and he's working out of the shotgun. Two H-backs, one to each side. Got two wide outs stacked on the right side, and one far out to the left on the far side, working on the left hash. Spriggs sends a man in motion towards the far side. Again, fake the jet, jet sweep, and now Spriggs will loft it into the end zone, and it's intercepted! Intercepted by TLU, who came up with it. Is that Donovan Jones? 29 on the play. Get a number on. <laughs> That's trying to see who that was. Michael Tomaselli. I guess Troy's brother on the yeah. interception there. A little throw. They tried to lob it on the outside. Nothing was really there. I'm not sure what Spriggs saw. The TLU sideline didn't even know it was picked off. Initially, they couldn't see it. But Tomaselli makes that play. Huge turnover in the end zone. That's now the fourth turnover forced by this TLU Bulldog team in the first half. And. They once again hold, and Southwestern still scoreless. Three interceptions in the first half, and Tomaselli really the only man there in the end zone. Mm -hmm. It was almost a fade pattern for Tomaselli. <laughs> he ran there out for him. Yeah, and he makes the interception. Bulldogs take over, first and 10 at their own 20. Cosby, play fake, rolling right, looking downfield, has a man wide open and caught at the 47-yard line is Wallace. He had to wait on that ball. Mm -hmm. He got behind the defense as he falls down, but the, the uh, Bulldogs yeah. have a first down. I think Cosby was going through his progressions there, and, and I think Wallace might have been the last one because he was begging for the ball down the field, eventually got it to him, and there's a big play right off the turnover. Gain of 27 yards on the pass to Wallace, who's having a good first half. He had a good game last week up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. At their own 47-yard line. Here's Cosby taking the snap, running. He'll go around the right. Now pitch it to his running back along the far sideline and taking it inside the 40-yard line is to Corey Willis with a first down. Nice job by Seth as he took it to the line of scrimmage, saw some defenders, and had Willis on his right flank, pitched it out to him, and he runs down the sideline. Cosby's done a great job with these option plays tonight. Another time where he just stays patient and eventually now flips it out to Willis, and he gets about 10 extra yards. So now Jacob Fortone will check in uh, forward to Corey. And late substitution coming in. Chase Pottek will line up in the left slot. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Pirate 39-yard line. Under five minutes to go here, first half. Bulldogs out in front, 14 to nothing. Cosby shotgun. He'll give it to his running back, Fortone, going around the right side, inside the 35, inside the 30, and dropped at the 26-yard line. Another first down run for the Bulldogs. Gomez on the stop there for Southwestern, but another first down for this Bulldog offense. They're on a roll once again, under five minutes here in the first half. They've scored a couple of touchdowns off of Pirate miscues, trying to do the same here. They started this drive at their own 20. 
They've driven it all the way down to the Pirate 28. Cosby shotgun for Tone to his left. A give, no, a fake, and now a throw to the left side, complete to Wallace at the 25, trying to get around defender, and he gets tripped up at the 18-yard line, but picked up a nice gain on the play. It'll be second down and about two. I tell you what, the chemistry between Cosby and Wallace has been really impressive here early, especially early in the season with the transfer like this. I mean, they've been on the money with each other. I think Wallace has caught every target hit thrown his way so far, and it's second and short. Six receptions for 90 yards, all in the first half for Jacob Wallace. Second down and one for the Bulldogs. They're inside the red zone at the Pirate 19-yard line. Working left hash, right to left. Here's Cosby. Give it to a running back. This is Weston, and he'll take it inside the 20, down to the 18, and flags come in behind the play. 3.33 left to go as we wait for the call from the referee. And they'll be moving this one back. So that call on Kyle Weghorst, the tackle, and it'll turn it into a second and 11 for the Bulldogs. So a little, mis little miscue there from TLU as Guzman in the backfield with Cosme. Four wide receivers here on the second and long. And the Bulldogs working left. Tash got movement along the line, maybe offside, maybe free play for Seth. He'll throw it for Wallace on the left side ball, batted up in the air, and it falls incomplete. At the 15-yard line, flag down at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be an offsides against the Pirates. Five-yard penalty, and the Bulldogs will replay the down. Another free playing. Number 99 and number 90, defense in the neutral zone is the snap. Five-yard penalty, replay second down. I think it's the second time Williams, Jack, and Levine have lined up offside. Yeah. And a free play, like you mentioned, Easton, for... Seth Cosby going deep for his wide receiver. It was triple cover, yes. but why not? You had a free yes, play. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> his favorite target of the night, seven catches for 99 yards. We've got Jacob Wallace so far on the night. Second down and six for the Bulldogs at the 24. Here's a throw to Wallace on the uh, left side. He's trying to spin away from some tacklers. He'll take it down to the 20. It'll be about a yard shy of the first down. It'll be third down. So Jacob Wallace goes over 100 yards all here in the first half. Quite a start to your TLU career, a couple touchdowns last week and then over 100 yards in the first half of this week. He'll come out here on this play as Fortone also checks back in on this third and short. Third down and three. They're going to mark it at the 21-yard line of the Pirates, so the Bulldogs need the 18 here. Fortone is the running back to the right of Seth Cosby, works out of the gun, three wide outs to the far side on the right, one to the left. Seth calls the signals. He'll play fake it, throw it towards the right side, and broken up by a Pirate defender intended for Potek at the 16-yard line. Fourth down, looks like the field goal unit's going to come in. Yeah, that was Ethan, Mil Ethan Mills, the free safety for Southwestern. 6'1 sophomore from Katy, Texas, on the stop. A couple, couple times now this Southwestern secondary has made it difficult, especially on the short throws, getting their hands in there in the passing angles for Cosme. So incomplete, and now Joaquin Rodriguez on to attempt the field goal. This will be from 38 yards on the left hash. Here's the snap ball, plays down, has plenty of distance. Line drive is no good off to the left. So the senior kicker, Joaquin Rodriguez, misses from 38 yards, 228 left to go first half, and the score remains TLU 14, Southwestern nothing. Rodriguez looked good in warm-ups, hitting almost 45, 50 range. Got the leg. Yeah. And there's not much wind today either, but he just hooked it a bit too far to the left. So now this Southwestern offense will come back out on the field with a little two-minute drill before half. 2.28 to go. And it looks like Spriggs is going to be the quarterback. Remaining in the game in relief for Damian Gomez. Both of those quarterbacks have thrown interceptions. Gomez... Two on the day so far, one for Spriggs. Back to throw is Spriggs, throws it across the middle, has the receiver caught at the 35 for a first down. Graydon Thompson with the reception. He gets hit hard by a defender there, and it's a first down, though. Yeah, we didn't call Thompson's name very much in that first quarter, but here in the second, he's come alive and has made quite a bit of plays for Southwestern. He moves the sticks there. So first and 10. At their own 35, give to the running back. He gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Kobe Bartlett, no gain. Actually lost a couple. 
A good push up front there from that TLUD line, and now a timeout called by Southwestern. So we'll keep it here with 2.05 left to go in the first half. Bulldogs out in front of the Pirates, 14 to nothing. Pitching a shutout, forcing a lot of turnovers. Three interceptions, a muff kickoff return, and the Bulldogs have been taking advantage. Yeah, the scoreboard speaks for itself. It's 14 nothing because of those four turnovers, Chris. I mean, both of those scores from TLU came off two of those turnovers from Southwestern, including that muff kickoff return that set up the second touchdown. Teal you right now, maybe missed a couple, missed out on a couple opportunities on those last couple of turnovers to put points on the board. But this defense has still played phenomenal all throughout the first half, and they're maintaining this two-score lead here with two minutes to go. And I believe the um, Southwestern will get the ball to start the second half, though. Yeah, well, they ended the uh, last drive for the Pirates on an interception in the end zone by Michael Thomas Sally turning away a uh, scoring opportunity for the Pirates. They come out of the timeout, second down and twelve. From their own 32-yard line, Southwestern with the ball. Three wide outs to the right, one to the left. Spriggs back to throw, has time now. Rolling right here comes pressure and going towards his left. He'll tuck it and run, take it up to the 35-yard line, and he's dropped right there for a gain of four. Now flag comes in yeah. at the end of this play. And that's going to be a late hit on a Bulldog defender. I think that was number 33. Markel Turner, the senior linebacker, kind of came in late. That flag came in late as well from that southwestern sideline. I think the reaction from the crowd caused that penalty to be thrown. So. so we're under two minutes left to go here first half. Again, Bulldogs up 14 to nothing, 155 officially on the clock. Officials huddling together at the 34-yard line of the Pirates discussing this penalty here, and let's get the call. Yeah. So there you have the explanation. Quarterback Spriggs dove ahead. He got hit, not sliding, so not defenseless. No penalty, third and nine for the Pirates now at their own 35-yard line. Spriggs shotgun gets the snap. Looking, looking. Here comes pressure. He'll throw it left sideline and is intercepted. Intercepted by Hardy at the 40. Coming back the other way across the 50. Inside the 40 and out of bounds along the far sideline and around the 35-yard line. Actually, Thomas. that was, yeah, that's Jamario, Jamario Thomas, Thomas with the interception, 13, not 12. Second pick of the day for Thomas, and a late flag comes in, probably maybe an excessive celebration, as you should be, though. That's your fifth turnover cause of the half. Second pick for Thomas already, as he read that like a book. Four interceptions in this first half for that Bulldog defense. You mentioned it, Easton. Thomas with his second interception of the half, sophomore defensive back. Making the play there out of Jasper, Texas. And uh, we're waiting for the officials to sort out the flag. It apparently happened after the interception. So the Bulldogs are going to retain possession as we wait for the call from the officials. 134 left to go here in the first half. Bulldogs up 14 to nothing. Offense getting ready to come onto the field. Pirate defense getting ready to get onto the field while the officials huddle at the 30 yard line. Of the Pirates, uh, let's get the explanation from our referee as you listen to Bulldog Football and KWED Seguin and TLUBulldogs.com. Wow, that's going to be a 30-yard yeah. penalty. So you lose pretty much every yeah. every return yard right there with that penalty. But it's still, you, you change possession, so it's still a win for the Bulldogs. They definitely lost a lot of yardage. They were inside the 25 on that return, and now they're backed up almost to midfield. All right, let's see where they uh, mark this. They're going to take it across the 50. They keep on walking. Yeah. Referees to the 45, to the 40, inside the 40, and down to the 37-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will start. Their own 37. They've got 94 seconds to work with here before the end of the half. Trying to add to a two-touchdown lead. Already up 14 to nothing. But now uh, four interceptions yeah. by the Bulldog defense in this first half. Two picks thrown by each quarterback for the Pirates, mm -hmm. Spriggs and Gomez. And this is a sneaky key possession for this Bulldog offense. They've kind of petered out in these last couple of drives, but a real chance to make him 
Maybe make it a three-score lead before halftime. Hartone in the backfield with Cosby. First to 10 at their own 37. Play fake to Jacob. Cosby back to throw. Steps up. Throws towards the right sideline. Complete and out of bounds at the uh, Southwestern 38-yard line. Was that Chase Potek? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Potek coming across the middle. But great protection from that TLU O-line to give Cosby the time for that long developing route to break open. And Cosby right on the money. It's first down. Well, almost gained what they lost on the penalty. Down to the... 38-yard line of Southwestern. Shotgun. Here's Cosme. Get to four tone. Straight up the middle. Runs right into the line for a gain of maybe a yard. Clock continues to roll. 120 and counting. Left to go here. First half. Bulldogs up 14-0. I will say that big play definitely allows the Bulldogs to not have to move as quickly here on these next few plays. They still go no huddle and saving those timeouts. Four wide outs with Fortone in the backfield with Cosme back to throw. Here comes pressure from behind. He's going to roll right, throws downfield, has a receiver along the far sideline at the 27, caught and out of bounds for a first down. Down along the far sideline, didn't see who that was. That was number six, Caleb Camarillo on the catch. Nice toe tap on the sideline. That might have been good on Sundays. Got both feet in. Mm -hmm. So Caleb with his first reception. Gets the first down at the Southwestern 28-yard line. Again, no huddle for the Bulldogs. Clock stops. 102 left to go in the first half. Cosby gets the snap out of the gun. Has time. Pulls it down. Now here comes pressure. Rolling right. Looking downfield. Headed towards the sideline. Has the receiver caught at the 15. Pod tech inside the 10. And pushed out of bounds at the 3-yard line. That might have is that Fortone. Oh, that's Jacob Fortone. Mm -hmm. 22, not 28. But the Bulldogs will have it first and goal. Cosby found him late. Fortone was just sitting there begging for the ball. Cosby found him eventually. Great job extending the play. And another chunk gain for the CLU offense. It's first and goal. They stop the clock as they move the chains. 52 seconds left to go. First and goal for the Bulldogs at the seven-yard line of the Pirates. And now whistles. And we have a timeout called. Now, so head coach Joe Austin and the Pirates taking a timeout. We'll keep it here. 52 seconds left to go. Bulldogs trying to increase their lead, trying to take advantage of another Southwestern turnover. And now you really start to think, do you want to maybe slow the tempo down a bit to maybe not allow any chance for Southwestern to get the ball back? I think either way you're fine with it. You want to score points. And the way your defense is played, you should be pretty confident. But I expect the Bulldogs to maybe just pound the rock here in these last couple plays to maybe milk the clock down just a little bit more to give them comfortability going into halftime. They got a couple of capable running backs in there that could do that for you. Actually, three when you include uh, Weston Guzman. So you got uh, Jacob Fortone and DeCorey Willis back there. You remember the Bulldogs won the coin toss, elected to receive at the beginning of this game. So Southwestern will get the ball first in the second half. But the Bulldog defense has been up to the task here mm -hmm. today, pitching a shutout here uh, late in the first half. And really only one drive for Southwestern that was – I guess became dangerous for the TLU defense, but they ended up making that interception in the end zone. The only time Southwestern touched the inside of the 20. So first and goal for the Bulldogs as they come out of the timeout. They've got it at the Southwestern seven-yard line. Cosby shotgun for tone to his left set. Gets the snap. Give to Jacob. Right side. No, it's set taking it himself to the left, and he'll run right into the end zone. Fooled me again. Second <laughs> touchdown. For Seth Cosby on the night. The RPOs tonight from Coach LeHue and Cosby are messing up everybody, but another great fake, and then they pick up Andrews on the pass, so Cosby just takes it right in himself. No one stopped the quarterback, and he walks right down the middle for his second touchdown. Seth fooled me once, and he fooled me twice, and he gets his second touchdown of the night, extends that TLU uh, lead as they line up wide here on the extra point attempt, and now they'll come all in together. And it'll be Joaquin Rodriguez, a senior right footer, with the extra point attempt from Smithson Valley, former Ranger, to attempt this extra point. And ball's placed down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 47 seconds left to go here. First half, and the Bulldogs now lead a 21 to nothing up at halftime. Bryce Hayes. TLU Sports Information Director. He'll be joining us, talking uh, about some of the other sports at TLU here in the fall, the soccer teams in action, cross country, volleyball as well. And Bryce will get us up to date at the half. We'll also look at some numbers, try to get you some scores as well, all here at the half at Birkenbach Field in Georgetown here on a Saturday night. So glad you could be with us. Chris Austin along with Easton Allen, TLU Bulldog Football. 
on KWED and TLUBulldogs.com. Nice start here mm-hmm. for TLU coming off that loss to 21st-ranked Wisconsin Oshkosh last Saturday up there in Wisconsin. Oshkosh not too far from Green Bay in uh, Packer country for the Bulldogs last week. No more Aaron Rodgers, though, up there. Yeah, he's moved on to uh, New York, well, New Jersey. Jordan Love, the Jordan Love era starts mm-hmm. for the uh, Green Bay Packers on Sunday as the Bulldogs will kick it away here. And the kicker is Logan Barnes. So Barnes will kick this one as he's got it teed up at the 35, gets a 10-yard head start. Yeah, this will be a high kick to return man who will drift into the end zone and take it for a touchback. That looked like uh, that was the running back, Bartlett. So first and 10 for the Pirates at their own 25 with 47 seconds left to go here in the half. I'm not sure if you're head coach Joe Austin, if you want to take many chances seeing as many times the Pirates have turned the ball over today. If I'm him, I'm just running the football. Maybe if you break a couple big ones, you get around midfield, maybe toss up a Hail Mary. But even with those chances, you might be intercepted with the way this first half's gone. So I expect Southwestern to play this pretty conservative going into halftime. So it's being down three scores. So it's Spriggs, the quarterback, first and 10 for the Pirates at their own 25-yard line. Four wideouts. He's in the shotgun. He'll give it to the running back. This is Bartlett. Has a hole on the left side across the 25 to the 30. He's dropped down at the 31-yard line. Gain of six. So decent gain there on first down, but, yeah, that clock's just ticking down, and Southwestern seems pretty content with just going into halftime. Might have to run one more play here. 25 seconds on the play clock, and, well, 20 now. Yeah, half a second ahead. Of the game clock, so one more play here maybe here from the Pirates. Second down and four at their own 31. Spriggs shotgun takes the snap, gives to Bartlett. Another hole on the left side across the 35, across the 40, and he's dropped at the 44-yard line, and that'll be the final play. You know, they'll stop him momentarily for the first down then wind up the clock, but both teams are going to head to the locker room as now the scoreboard shows triple zero. So a good first half for the Texas Lutheran Bulldogs here on the road in week two looking to get their first win of the season. They lead this one. Over the Southwestern Pirates, the score, TLU 21 and Southwestern nothing. We'll take a timeout, have a look at some numbers, some scores, and again, we'll we'll visit with TLU Sports Information Director Bryce Hayes as well. It's halftime here at Birkin Backfield. You're listening to Bulldog Football on AM 1580 KWED and streaming at TLUBulldogs.com. .com. Established in 1947, CNC Steel Texas was Commercial Metal Company's first mini mill. Through continuous upgrades and technology improvements, CNC Steel Texas has evolved into a world class, state of the art steel mini mill that ships products globally and is capable. You got a minute? Sure. Come on in. You working on another radio jingle? No. You got a good idea for one? Well, actually I do. Thought we'd tell the good people about all the pests we control. Like ants, roaches, 
spiders, scorpions, silverfish, mice, termites, rats, and bed bugs. Remember, Angel Pest Control. We'll get those little devils online at angelpest.com. And for social content, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The Kaler Company is a proud sponsor of Texas Lutheran University and the TLU Bulldogs. The Kaler Company provides quality general construction services and fine architectural millwork in Seguin and beyond. The Kaler Company is a name that you can trust. Hi, I'm Steve Kaler. We've been taking care of our customers and their projects since 1954. The Kaler Company wishes the Bulldogs great success on this season. Call the Kaler Company at 830-303-6256. Go Bulldogs! Do your loved ones deserve the best? The answer is yes. We at GRMC want to thank you, Seguin, for recognizing our hospice team's compassion and dedication in Seguin Gazette's Best of the Best Reader's Choice Awards. With back-to-back Best Hospice Care wins and more than 50 combined years of experience, Guadalupe Regional Hospice truly provides the best hospice care for your loved ones. We're honored to be able to serve our community and are sincerely thankful to the families for allowing our team to be part of your family and journey. Helping people with life-limiting conditions to live in comfort and dignity is our highest priority. And it's a privilege to make an impact on the lives of our patients, assisting patients to live as they wish. Surrounded by family and friends and 24-hour access to someone on call are a few reasons why our hospice care was voted as best of the best by the Seguin Gazette, Guadalupe Regional Medical Center, Advanced Medicine, Personal Touch. Halftime here at Burkle Backfield in Georgetown, Texas. Texas Lutheran Bulldogs out in front of the Southwestern Pirates by a score of 21 to nothing. Good start here for the Bulldogs through the first 30 minutes of this one. Chris Austin along with Easton Allen here on the broadcast for you. Let's look at some scores while we have them here around the American Southwest Conference today. Saw Ross State a loser earlier this afternoon at home, they fell to Eastern New Mexico 51-12. to We'll see Saul Ross later on this season. The Bulldogs, well, they'll be going out to Alpine later on uh, this season, actually next month. Austin College falls to Rhodes College. That's the alma mater of uh, TLUSID Bryce Hayes as the Rhodes College football team knocks off. Austin College 19-17 to in that one. Harden-Simmons ranked sixth in the country. Got a win today in Wisconsin. At Wisconsin Lacrosse, as Harn Simmons takes it 28 to 21. That was a matchup of the uh, number six team and the number 11 team in all of D3. And Harn Simmons with the victory this afternoon. Some D1 scores for you earlier on today. Texas A&M falls to Miami on the road, 48 to 33 in that one. Aggies fall to one and one on the season. Halftime score in Lubbock, Oregon, out in front. Of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, 18 to 13. SMU and Oklahoma playing. They're in the fourth quarter, and the Sooners lead that one, 28 to 11. And Easton, I know you've been following this score in the third quarter, 11:04 left to go. Texas Longhorns in front of the Alabama Crimson Tide, 13 to nine. So so far, Longhorns getting it done in Tuscaloosa. Hanging in there. They are. So uh, that's a look at. Uh, some of the scores that we have, D3 and D1 for you here at the half. The score here in Georgetown, TLU 21 and Southwestern nothing. We'll have a look at some numbers here in a little bit. But I know, uh, Easton, you got to be happy with the way the Bulldogs have played in the first half, especially that Bulldog defense. Up 21 nothing. five takeaways in that first half, four of them caused by the defense, all interceptions. One of them was probably the biggest one of the half was Tomaselli in the back corner of the end zone. That's right. An interception to prevent the touchdown in the red red zone area for the Pirates. Also had that special teams turnover with the muffed kickoff return. So Bulldogs in all three phases dominating a big drive at the end of the half as well, led by Seth Cosme to get that third touchdown of the half. So it's been all TLU so far tonight. Yeah, operating that two-minute drill here at the end of the half. So the Bulldog offense looking well as well as we we talked about that uh, defense pitching a shout-out. They gave up 48 points. Last week, but that was to the number one twenty-one, uh, number twenty-one team mm-hmm. in the country. But obviously, defensive coordinator Bo Gretsch and his staff—they have—they have made some adjustments, and they're looking good here tonight. Yeah, I mean, the defense has looked rock solid. I think the biggest thing I've noticed too is they've just been so active. Two of those interceptions were just caused off deflections, not even the quarterback's fault 
early on. I, was, I think it was Gomez on those two de- deflection interceptions. It was just Caleb Giles and I believe someone, another defender on that other play just getting their hands in there, poking the ball up in the air, and another Bulldog was right there on the spot. So they're just active around the football, making things happen. So a, co- oh, a couple of interceptions for uh, Troy Tomaselli in this first half for the Bulldogs. Uh, Damian Gomez, the starting quarterback for the Pirates, threw two interception. he, to interceptions. He was uh, relieved by Jalen Spriggs, and he has thrown two interceptions as well. So you mentioned it, Easton, mm-hmm. the four interceptions by the defense, a muffed uh, return by the kickoff unit. For the Pirates, they've given the ball to the uh, Bulldogs five times, and yeah, yeah. they find themselves down 21 nothing here at the half. Let's do this. I see uh, Bryce Hayes, Sports Information Director with the uh, TL with Texas Lutheran University here in the uh, press box. We'll take a break right now and be back on the other side. We'll talk to Bryce about some of the fall sports going on at TLU, soccer, cross country, volleyball, and more. Halftime continues here. At Birkenbach Field, it's TLU 21 and Southwestern nothing. This is Bulldog Football on KWED and streaming at SeguinToday.com. Taylor Street Farm, a family business in Seguin, Texas, specializes in locally grown trees. Their farm is teeming with native oaks of all kinds, plus cedar elms and desert willows. Ranging from 1 to 30 gallons, they've got trees of all sizes. Each tree is nurtured from locally gathered acorns and... CMC Steel Texas has evolved into a world-class, state-of-the-art steel mini-mill that ships products globally and is capable of producing a broad range of shapes, merchant bar, and special bar quality products in many grades. When dealing with CMC Steel Texas, you get more than a steel manufacturer. You get personalized service from a group of steel professionals who take pride in the products that they produce and sell. CMC Steel Texas, your partner for success. Anders Pierce Realty knows this area about as well as anyone. From Seguin to New Braunfels to San Antonio or San Marcos, their expertise has proven invaluable for their clients. Anders Pierce Realty is here for all your real estate needs. They can help whether your interest lies with a house, lot, acreage, ranch, farm, office, warehouse, storage, or anything else. They'll do their best to ensure that you are satisfied with all your real estate needs. Learn more today. Visit AndersPierce.com. That's AndersPierce.com. Davila's Barbecue has been providing quality eats for Seguin since 1959. Grilling and smoking choice cuts of meat to the perfect level of tenderness is their business. The sausage is homemade, the ribs fall off the bone, and, well, the peach cobbler is the perfect ending to any meal. You can find Davila's Barbecue on Kingsbury Street near Guadalupe Street. But did you also know that you can find Davila's Barbecue on Facebook and Twitter? Or visit their website at davilasbbq.com. It's plain hot. Sterling Schultz Angel Pest Control. And while our team of happy, honest, hardworking angels are no strangers to the Texas summers, we just wanted to say thanks to our customers who have allowed our technicians to arrive a little bit early to beat the Texas heat. It goes a long way and it doesn't go unnoticed. It's one of those things that makes our customers and community so great. You know, real. We can't control the temps, but we can control your pest. Angel Pest Control. We'll get those little devils online at angelpest.com. The Kaler Company is a proud sponsor of Texas Lutheran University and the TLU Bulldogs. The Kaler Company provides quality general construction services and fine architectural millwork. with how the uh, TLU defense is playing so far. Is this TLU or the Steel Curtain? 
<laughs> steel I, curtain, I, I, I black and gold, huh? Is that right? <laughs> I haven't seen the TLU defense play like that since I've been here. This is my third year here now. I mean, that's some of the most dominant defense I've seen from TLU since I've been here. Five turnovers and a half is something that's beyond impressive, and it's something that's the way you want a football game. You've heard me harp on it before, and I've done play by play with you before. If you win the turnover margin, you're only going to win the game. If you're plus five and you turn a margin a half, and you see it. You're, you're, you're probably going to win a game, and you're going to win it in a dominant fashion, and that's what they're doing so far in this half. You're seeing it on the scoreboard with Bulldogs out in front, 21 to nothing. Well, uh, successful things going on for the other sports here in the fall at TL. You know, volleyball, cross country, soccer, all in action. What's going on with all the other sports? Absolutely. It's been an electric start to the beginning of the season for everybody. I mean, volleyball is receiving votes in the top 25. They dropped one today, but they're 4-2, and two, heading out to California, playing all-ranked teams. So it'll be an exciting weekend next week out in Thousand Oaks, California, and the California Invitational out there, hosted by Cal Lutheran. Women's soccer won again yesterday against Caltech, 2-1. to one. Alyssa Simeon was Offensive Player of the Week in the SCAC. Scored another goal yesterday. She's already up to three, leading the conference in goals. After leading the conference in goals last season, being Offensive Player of the Year. Men's soccer is off to their best start since 2015, starting 3-0. Oh. They got another game again tomorrow against Concordia. Cross country, we've already had Mackenzie Combs, who's a New Braunfels Canyon alum, finished first amongst D3 runners in both their races so far. So if you're not paying attention yet, TLU's on a streak, and mm -hmm. I advise you if you're in the Seguin or KWD listen area, show up, show out for this team. Yeah, out at uh, you know all the uh, facilities you have there on campus at TLU. As we talk with Bryce Hayes, sports information director at Texas Lutheran. A lot of success for the fall sports. We got the uh, winter sports coming up, and mm -hmm. Easton Allen just stood up here, six foot six power <laughs> forward, right next to me, and the defending champion in the three point contest at Bulldog Bash. That, that he is. Yeah. Bulldog Bash is coming up. We just announced it, October nineteenth at mm -hmm. seven thirty. We're gonna hopefully see Easton defend his crown. In yeah. Three, three point contest. How, how do you feel, Easton? I'm I would li I'd like to do three point contests again, but I'm not gonna lie. We were talking on the way up here. I'd rather do the, rather do the dunk contest. Listen next to this year, guy. So, so <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe I'm gonna try to be the champion. Both. I'm gonna let our TLU plus listeners know. Easton may be six six, but for as long as I've known him, he may have dunked it one time. <laughs> for him to say he wants to do the dunk contest, you all heard him. This could he be entertaining. I got I got some stuff in the bag that no one's seen. He, he better dunk it more than one time, or he's gonna have a problem with me personally. Now was it Xavier Phillips who won the dunk contest last year? He who won? He didn't participate. He oh, probably he won. Won. Right. It was yeah. JT Watson that shocked everybody. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. The Fredericksburg product came out, won it off the backboard, <laughs> through the legs, and got so, the crowd off like, the feet. So maybe some fierce competition from uh, Easton Allen, the Bulldog Square right here. East, Easton is normally in the gym before I get there, so he may have something in his bag that I yeah. haven't seen. Exactly. <laughs> if he pulls it out, I'm all for it. Yeah. That, make, that makes for a better time. It was fun last year. I hope you guys show up, show out for mm -hmm. both the men's team and the women's team. I know you guys started practice yesterday. Women start on the 12th, so I look forward to another great season supporting you guys, working along with you guys in the many different capacities that I work with you guys with. And I know TLU Plus is looking forward to the stream of your games. I know this game has been a very first football game that we've had on TLU Plus, and what a way to start. Mm -hmm. And so Bulldog Bash coming up next month. October free. 19th. Free. Free, free. free for anybody. If students, if you're listening, come up and show out. It was fun last year. You had a good turnout. Yeah. You, you heard the And watch yeah. Easton Allen defend now. his three-point crown out there. <laughs> and, and one more thing, I'll talk about the TLU softball team. They're going to Italy, and, and you're going with them, huh, Bryce? Yes, they are going to Italy beginning of next month. They'll be over there for just over a week, taking on some of the top teams in Italy. And it'll be a fun time and a growing, growing experience for the girls. And I know that's something they're looking forward to. And they've earned that. That's, that's one of the um, perks of being – what they are at the TLU softball program. They'll get to represent TLU, represent Seguin, and represent that softball program. I know Coach Wilson's looking forward to that, and we'll see what we can do over there in Italy. Have you been international before, Bryce? I've been to Jamaica. Jamaica, and all right. I've been to Canada. I've not been to Italy. So not to my, Europe. This will be my first time in Europe. All right. Well, uh, have fun. And, again, when is that? Uh, so it will be October 5th through the 13th, I believe. All right. Well, have fun. Exciting uh, things going on in TLU. Yeah. So going to go see all the sites and everything. Absolutely. I, I know Coach Wilson looking forward to golfing over there, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what all we get into in Italy. I know it'll be a fun time. The girls have been talking about it nonstop since the day he, he told them last year, so we're looking forward to it. Wow, that's real cool. All right, well, Bryce, we appreciate your time getting us up to date on uh, everything happening uh, sports-wise at TLU. Thank you, guys, and keep supporting the Bulldogs. Pups up, and let's go to live you. That's right, pups up. And that is Bryce Hayes, the Sports Information Director over at Texas Lutheran University. It is halftime here at Berkebach Field. 
TLU football team out in front of Southwestern, 21 to nothing. We'll take one more break. Have the start of the second half just ahead. It's Bulldog football on KWED and streaming at TLUBulldogs.com. future, including through your estate giving plan, contact Elaine Bennett at 830-401-7209 or visit grmedfoundation.org for more information. Lloyd's Brake and Alignment will service and repair your tires, including balancing. Lloyd's does front end repair and wheel alignment. If your vehicle needs brake repair, Lloyd's is a place to go. Lloyd's at 1824 West Kingsbury Street is a continued supporter of the TLU Bulldogs. Lloyd's, with quality service and honest prices, says go Bulldogs. For Lloyd's Brake and Alignment, call 372-5510. That's 372-5510. Taylor's Tree Farm, a family business in Seguin, Texas, specializes in locally grown trees. Their farm is teeming with native oaks of all kinds, plus cedar elms and desert willows. Ranging from 1 to 30 gallons, they've got trees of all sizes. Each tree is nurtured from locally gathered acorns and seeds that are germinated and grown in their greenhouse until they're ready for transfer. At Ehlers Tree Farm, they're not just growing trees, they're growing your future green spaces. Visit AhlersTreeFarm.com to learn more. Just moments away from the second half here at Birkenbach Field. TLU 21, Southwestern uh, nothing. Chris Austin, Easton Allen with you. And Easton, you got to look at some of the numbers mm -hmm. at the half for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Seth Cosme, 15 of 21 passing in that first half, 180 yards. Didn't throw for a touchdown, but also took care of the football. No turnovers from the entire TLU offense. They've been keeping it clean on the rushing attack. Fortone and Willis, a com nearly a combined 60 yards in that first half, 10 for 29 for Jacob Fortone in that touchdown. Corey Willis, six carries for 23 yards. Cosme even ran in a couple touchdowns and had three carries for 19 yards. Patek and Eugene Robinson, as well as Guzman, had a couple carries mixed in there. Jacob Wallace, dominant first half, eight catches, 102 yards in just 30 minutes play. No touchdowns yet, no pass touchdowns yet, but also Chase Patek and Jacob Fortone getting involved in the passing game as well. And I think the biggest stat of the, of the night so far is those five turnovers, like we're going to keep mentioning. That's the biggest reason right now why this Bulldog team is up. 21 nothing. So the Bulldogs will kick it off to start the second half. The Pirates already on the field. They will defend the north end zone. So Southwestern will go from left to right in front of us. As we get ready to start the third quarter here in Georgetown, Texas tonight. Good first half for the Bulldogs. They lead it 21 to nothing. And it'll be Logan Barnes to tee it up at the 35 yard line. Three men back deep. For the Pirates. Bulldogs in their road whites. White on white tonight. Black on black for the Pirates here in Georgetown. Home game for them. Their home opener. The Bulldogs will have their home opener next week. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So here comes Barnes moving forward towards the tee. And the kick is away. And under end towards the near sideline. Fair catch is called for at the three-yard line. And made by the running back Bartlett and the Pirates will start at their own 25-yard line. Also interesting to see who's going to be the quarterback coming out. I'm assuming it's going to be Spriggs. He finished out the first half for Southwestern. We'll see who trots on out there for the Pirates. So we uh, see the offense come on out onto the field. And it looks like it's Gomez again. Yep. So Gomez coming back into the ball game. He started the first half through two interceptions. Was relieved by Spriggs, and now he'll start the third quarter. First and 10 for the Pirates at their own 25. In the shotgun as Gomez has a running back to his left. 
Gets the snap, play fake, back to throw, looking left, throws across the middle, complete, and hit right away at the 32, and tackled for a gain of about seven, yard lock, seven yards as the receiver. Gain of seven on the play. Yeah, Mitchell Garrett coming on that slant across the middle, took the contact after the catch, hung on to almost get that first down on the opening play. Good hit there from Tomaselli, the safety on that one, but he hung on and second and one. We'll give him nine yards. So, yeah, second and one for the Pirates at their own 34-yard line. Man in motion and comes in front of the quarterback and a give to a running back left side into the line. No gain. And that'll bring up a third down right side of that defensive uh, front for the Bulldogs standing up. Bartlett there at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Christian Monroe all in there. Caleb Giles as well. He's been all over the place so far. Forced to cause an interception earlier in the ball game. I think it was the first one back in that opening quarter. And now third and inches for Southwestern. We'll see if they try to pound the ball up the middle. Empty backfield, though. Yeah, and a shotgun for uh, Gomez. And now a wide receiver will come up and take the snap under center and push forward ahead to the 39-yard line. So, yeah, Gomez was in the shotgun, but then one of the receivers came up under center. And now we've got a flag along the line, along the line of scrimmage, and this might be an offsides on the Bulldogs. Southwestern had that pretty easily anyways, and now an injured Pirate on the field looks like an offensive lineman. Uh, so we'll take a quick timeout for him. But yeah, So they'll stop play here with 13-32 uh, uh, left to go here in the third quarter. When we come back, it'll be a first down for Southwestern at their own 39. It's TLU 21, Southwestern nothing. Actually, we'll keep it right here because the player's up on his feet. And it looks like he's going to be all right. He's going to make it off the field in, on his own power. I'm trying to see who that is. Looks like it's Josh Taylor, the right guard. Eli Tenor, Taylor is the center, but they're not related. So a first down on that sneak by one of the receivers on third and short. And now the Pirates have it first and 10 at their own 40-yard line. Their initial possession here in the second half, down 21 to nothing. There's the offsides call finally from the official after the Power offensive lineman got helped off the field. He looked all right. Now first and 10 from the 40. So they take the penalty, giving them the first down. Gomez shotgun running back to his right. That's Bartlett back to throw out of the shotgun. Drifting towards his right, looking downfield. Has a receiver caught at the 47-yard line. That's Thompson making the catch, and he's tackled right away. Nice catch on the outside, though, but 37 for TOU. Right there on the tackle immediately. So that was Gabriel Shepard, the freshman, out there one-on-one. -on -one. So gain of about seven, second down and three for the Pirates at their own 47-yard line. Again, Gomez, quarterback, shotgun, running back to his right. Gets a snap. Here's a draw up the middle, cross the 50, and tripped up at the 46. Gomez falls forward to the 45 with the first down. So Gomez showing off the legs a little bit. Didn't run too much. When we saw him in the first quarter, but a pretty good keeper there, and that's a first down. So Pirates moving the ball. We've seen them move the ball. They haven't been able to put any points on the board so far, but they've got it now in TLU territory at the 45 on their first drive here in the second half. Gomez back to throw, throwing the flat to the running back. Bartlett has it at the line of scrimmage and gets pushed out of bounds along that near sideline, making the play for the Bulldogs was Xavier Simpson, or check that, Gabriel Shepard, you mentioned freshman into the ball game. Gain of about five. Yeah, Shepard doing a pretty good job by himself on this near sideline. Number 13, Jamario Tom Thomas on the other side. He had those two interceptions in the first half, so Bulldogs looking good at corner right now. Five-yard gain, second and five for the Pirates at the TLU 40-yard line. Bulldogs rushing three here is Gomez works shotgun, running back to his left. Three wide outs left, one to the right. Play fake, back to throw. Here comes a blitz on the right side. Dumps it off in the flat and dropping it is the running back, Bartlett, incomplete. Bulldogs jumped on it thinking it might have been a fumble, but it was a forward pass. So third down upcoming and a big down at that. And Southwestern, you know they want to come out of halftime to give them, to light a spark and get back in this one while TLU is looking to shut the door here early. And it's third and five upcoming. Yeah, Shepard was... Coming on the blitz that time from the right side, and quarterback Gomez had to get rid of it, and Bartlett not ready for it. So third down and five for the Pirates as the Bulldogs show blitz. It's Gomez shotgun, gets a snap, and whistles and what? Movement along the line. 
False start's going to be the call against the Pirates. That'll move them up, move them back five yards to the 45. It'll bring up a third and ten. So they mark it off. Back to the TLU 45-yard line, third down and ten for the Pirates. Working shotgun is Gomez, takes the snap, gets to a running back up the middle, inside the 45, down to the 41, finally dropped at the 40. That's a new running back in there. I'm not sure that was Bartlett. And he got five yards. It'll be fourth and five. That was Sam LeBlue, LeBlue for the Pirates, new running back in there. And now fourth and five, and their offense is going to stay on the field here. Big down, four wide receivers with LeBlue next to Gomez in the backfield. Fourth down and five for the Pirates at the TLU 40. Here's Gomez, gets the snap, back to throw. Here comes pressure up the middle, gets rid of it, caught at the 36, but a yard short of the first down, making the play defensively is Tomaselli. It's actually incomplete, and the Pirates will turn it over on downs. Troy big, Tomaselli. Big time stop from the safety there. Came over last second, broke that pass up, wasn't even complete, hit the ground early, and that's going to be a turnover on downs, another change of possession going in TLU's favor, and we'll see the offense for the first time in the second half. So the defense again comes up big, pitching a shutout here with 11.35 left to go in the third quarter. TLU up 21 to nothing. Seth Cosby and the offense trot in from that far sideline as they take, a, take over at their own 40-yard line. Cosby gun, tight formation, stack receivers on the near side. Now in motion, it's four tone fakes. The jet sweep as he goes to the far side. Now out in the flat on the far side, gets the reception. He gets upended after a gain of about one up to the 41. A little motion there, pre-snap from Bulldog offense. Hit four tone there, not for a big gain. Now second and nine upcoming as Bulldogs look to get their rhythm going again here in the second half. So they'll move it from the left hash to the right hash. It'll be second down and nine for TLU at their own 41-yard line. Cosme with split backs, good to four tone around the right side, tries to turn the corner, does, takes it up to the 45 where he's pushed out of bounds as flags fly. We'll check the penalty, gain of about four by the running back four tone, but hold everything here. Let's see if they're going to bring this one back. Yeah, lots of penalty flags here in this week two matchup. Still early, so penalty has been a problem for both teams tonight. Five penalties on the Pirates tonight, a couple on the – Bulldogs so far. Personal foul, face mask, number 11, off edge, 15 yard penalty, replay, first down. So another personal foul on the Bulldogs. I think they've had about four of those here tonight. Yeah, that was on Jacob Wallace, must have been just blocking downfield and used his hands a little too much there, so it's second and forever now. Yeah, it is. Second down and... 23, ball marked at the TLU 27-yard line. Working right hash, it's Cosby in the gun. Looks towards that far sideline for the play call. To Corey Willis in the backfield with him. Shifts from his right side to his left. Cosby gets the snap, and it's a keeper right up the middle. And Seth will take it across the 30 and get tackled at the 31. Picked up four to bring up third and about 19. Not too many play calls you have here on third and 19, but you know you have you like a couple of your matchups on the outside with Wallace, even Chase Potex done a good job so far tonight as well. So, right, biggest thing right here is giving Cosby time to make a throw down the field, perhaps. Wallace will be lined up far out to the left, third and 19. Cosby shotgun, four wideouts, two to each side. Cosby with the snap. Back to throw, has time, steps up, now will run, takes it across the 35, and it'll be brought down at the 37, well short of the first down. And the punting unit going to come on out to the field. Jalen Levine makes the tackle for the Pirates. And Cameron Welch, the Canyon Cougar, out with the punting team. So the Pirates make a stand there, so both defenses with a strong start to the second half. Now Welch on the punt. Bartlett back deep with another return man. High snap over the head of Welch. It rolls back inside the 10 down to the 6. Cameron going to fall on it at the 4. So special teams miscue. The Pirates will take it over inside the TLU 5-yard line. Actually, low market at the 5. At the five -yard line, 
So bad snap there goes over the head of the punter, Cameron Welch. He recovered it back at the five, but it was fourth down, turnover on downs, and now very short field for this Pirate offense. So first big mistake there from this TLU ball club as that one, just a bad snap over Welch's head, and Welch is a pretty tall guy too, so that, that snap went way over his head, and now Southwestern with a prime opportunity to get their first points. Welch, six foot three, could not pull that high snap down, and it'll be the Southwestern offense, Gomez, the quarterback, and he's got LeBlue, the running back, to his left. Shotgun, two wide outs to the right, one to the left. Man in motion towards the far side in front of the quarterback. Whistles and movement along the line by the Pirates. Dominic Davila, the starting tight end, called for the fall start. First and goal now back at the 10 for the Pirates. Let's see if this TLU defense can come up with a stand. We saw last time they were down on this side of the field, we saw the interception from Tomaselli in the back corner. Let's see if the Bulldogs can generate some more magic. There's Michael Tomaselli. One of two Tomasellis back there in the defensive backfield for the Bulldogs. First and goal from the 10. Gama sends a man in motion in front of him towards the far side. He'll throw it to that man along the far sideline. Shakes the defender at the 10. Takes it into the end zone. Coleman Robertson with the touchdown. And the Pirates on the board for the first time tonight. Throw it out to the flat there to Robertson. He made a couple of Bulldog defenders miss and fought his way into the end zone. So Southwestern on the board here first in the second half. So they take advantage of the special teams. Miscue by the Bulldogs. Snap sailing over the head of punter Cameron Welch. Went all the way back to the five-yard line. Well, motion penalty moved it back to the 10, but Robertson gets the pass in the flat, takes it into the end zone, and now the kicker, Fournier, on for the extra point attempt for the Pirates. Ball placed down, kick is up, kick is good. With 9.14 left to go third quarter, it's now TLU 21, Southwestern 7. This is Bulldog Football on KWED and TLUBulldogs.com. Bulldogs.com. Established in 1947, CNC Steel Texas was commercial metal company's first mini mill. Through continuous upgrades and technology improvements, CNC Steel Texas has evolved into a world class, state of the art steel mini mill that ships products globally and is capable of producing a broad range of shapes, merchant bar, and special bar quality products in many grades. When dealing with CNC Steel Texas, you get more than a steel manufacturer. You get personalized service from a group of steel professionals who take pride in the products that they produce and sell. CNC Steel Texas. Texas is your partner for success. Anders Pierce Realty knows this area about as well as anyone. From Seguin to New Braunfels to San Antonio or San Marcos, their expertise has proven invaluable for their clients. Anders Pierce Realty is here for all your real estate needs. They can help whether your interest lies with a house, lot, acreage, ranch, farm, office, warehouse, storage, or anything else. They'll do their best to ensure that you are satisfied with all your real estate needs. Learn more today. Visit AndersPierce.com. That's AndersPierce.com. It'll be Eugene Robinson and Jacob Fortone back at the TLU 5 to receive this kickoff from the Southwestern kicker, Fournier. And he's got it teed up at the 35-yard line, kicking left to right. No win to speak of. Pirates lined up tight here on this kickoff as Fournier kicks it short. Little pooch kick and a fair catch is called by an up back at the 26-yard line. That's Mason Hardy. He'll make it, and that's where the Bulldogs will start this possession. The Pirates take advantage of a special team's miscue. Short field. They get on the board for the first time here tonight, Easton. Yeah, time for the TLU offense to try to respond. 21-7 Southwestern is alive and well now here in the second half, so a chance for the... Bulldogs to respond here and try to put some more points on the board. So Bulldog offense on the field. The defense for the Pirates now coming onto the field. They haven't whistled the play live yet as TLU waits for that defense for the Pirates to come onto the field. First and 10 from the 27. Cosme, shotgun, running back to his left. It's Willis. Gift to Willis. Has a whole left side. Takes it across the 30 and is upended at the 35-yard line. 
gain of about seven on first down by DeCorey. Yeah, nice hole open up there from Landon West and Frankie Saucedo on that left side of the O-line, but now we got another Pirate shaken up after the play. Now down on the field looks like Malik McDonald, one of the defensive tackles for uh, the Pirates, and time is called here with 8.48 left to go here in the third quarter. Next TLU football broadcast going to happen one week from tonight. The home opener at Bulldog Stadium in Seguin next Saturday. Bulldogs taking on Ave Maria from South Florida. It'll be the first meeting between the two programs. 6 o'clock kickoff, 5.30 pregame. You'll hear right here on AM 1580, KWED, and streaming at TLUbulldogs.com. Ave Maria, the gyrenes is uh, what I'm told they are called. Uh, from South Florida, they'll be flying across the Gulf of Mexico to come to uh, Seguin next week, and we'll have it for you here on KWED and TLUbulldogs.com. Bulldogs want to go into that game one and one, doing a good job here so far. 8.59 left to go, third quarter. Yeah, they lead Southwestern by two scores, 21-7, to seven, trying to add on to it as they come out of the timeout. McDonald heads to the sideline, walking off on his own power, so that's good to see. And McDonald, a key defender, too, for the Pirates in that middle of the defensive tackle, so that could be a big loss for the Pirates up front. So here's the snap to Cosme, throws it to the right side, complete to a receiver, juking and jiving and taking up to the 38-yard line with a first down. And that was uh, Eugene Robinson, former safety for the Bulldogs last year, now lining up at tight end. He's made a few plays tonight on the offensive side of the ball. So Robinson getting in there. Now he's going to go to the slot, play some receiver as Decoy Willis to Cosme's left here on this first down. And he ran out of a wild, or not a wildcat, a jet sweep earlier. Here's Willis up the middle, takes it across the 40, pushing the pile ahead to the 41. That's a gain of about three on first down for Decoy, second down and seven. And now Willis will exit here. Guzman will check back in. Just two wide receivers in this formation right now. Let's check that three with Robinson. Weston in along with Cole Andrus. And it's second down and seven for the Bulldogs at their own 41. Cosby, the quarterback, working gun. Gets the snap. Give to Goose. No, a fake and a throw across the middle and falling down, making the reception is the receiver at the 46-yard line. Is that Cole Andrus? Mm -hmm. Andrus yes, over the middle. He had some room to run, too, if he... Was able to stay upright, kind of got tripped up. Still did a good job, though, just making that play and securing the reception. So first down again for TLU. Cole was falling backwards as he caught that ball. Falls down at the Pirate 46-yard line. First and 10. Running back, yep, no, uh, yes, this is, no, outside. And with it, boy, again, Seth Cosby confusing me, <laughs> ending up with it. It's Cole Andrus along the far sideline. He takes it downfield to the 40, a gain of six. Yeah, those play-action fakes have been... Working all night for Cosme as he's been fooling the Southwestern defense and making plays as Andrews with another nice gain there. It's got to set up, set up second and short. Second and four at the Pirate 40. Cosme shotgun, Weston Guzman, the running back with him in the backfield to his right. Bulldogs going right to left as Seth looks towards the sideline for the play from his head coach, Neil LaHue. Gets the snap, back to throw, throws it right side. This is receiver, looks like. That is Camarillo. He takes it inside the 40, down to the 38, about a yard short of the first down. Actually, they're going to give it to him. He's, oh, he's, he's got he's, it. He got, the, he got to the stick, so Camarillo knows knows where he needed to be there, got the first down, and Bulldogs just keep on marching down the field. Got an extra yard there, shedding tacklers. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Southwestern 35-yard line. Camarillo, a couple of catches on the evening. Cosme Gunn, he's got four tone to his right. Here's a give to Jacob. Left side has a hole inside the 30 and drug down at the 28-yard line. Gain of seven. So Jacob four tone, Smithson Valley Ranger. Mm -hmm. Picking up eight yards on first down. Officially seven, they'll say. It'll be second down and three for the Bulldogs. At the Southwestern 28-yard line. No huddle offense for TLU. Cosby gets the play. Shouts it out to his offensive lineman. Steps back in the gun. Four-tone to his left. Another give to Jacob. Right side this time. He gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Tries to push forward, but 
Won't get any yardage there, no gain. Critical down upcoming here. Bulldogs have been slowly but surely moving their way down the field. They've been wearing down the Southwestern defense, but now a big play upcoming. Who's going to make it here on third and short as the Bulldogs might be in field goal range perhaps, but they also could be in four-down territory too. Weston Guzman going to check back into the ball game. They're going to line up tight this time with Guzman behind his quarterback, Cosby, in the pistol. Third and four. Play fake. Cosby the throw. Drifting back. Throws towards the left side. Complete at the 11-yard line. Making the catch is Klosterman. That's a first down. And what a play there from Cosby. He hung in there waiting for Klosterman to break open. You saw him breaking open at that last second. He, Seth stood in, made that throw. Huge conversion there on third down. Absolutely. First and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Responding to the score by Southwestern. They are up 21 to 7, trying to add to their lead. First and 10 at the Southwestern 13 yard line. Going right to left, working on the left hash. Cosby shotgun. Here's a give to four. No, fake. And now throw across the middle into the end zone. Oh, pass broken up at the last minute. Incomplete. Aiden O'Connell knocking the pass away. And it'll be second down. Tended for Wallace, who's been the favorite target mm -hmm. of. Cosme here tonight. Eight catches, 102 yards, all in the first half. Might have been the first time they didn't connect right there, too. We'll give O'Connell credit there, knocking that ball away at the goal line. Second down and 10 at the 13 for the Bulldogs. Two wide outs right, one to the left. That's Wallace on the left side. Give to the running back four tone. Little hole inside the 10. Gets hit hard at the six, but he picked up about seven yards. It'll bring up a third and three. Yeah, O'Connell was getting picked on a lot in that first half, but just broke up the pass for Wallace and then put the big hit on Fortone right there as well. So Pirates, though, needing to clamp down third and short. Another big down for TLU. Let's see if they can convert again down into the red zone. Jacob will stay in. Cole Andrus checks in. Jacob Wallace out there as well. Two wide outs to the far side on the right, and Wallace out to the left. Here's Cosme, shotgun, back to throw, stepping up. Here comes pressure, going to take it inside the five, spins Ooh. into the end zone, touchdown, Bulldogs. And why not spin in for your third touchdown of the night? Seth Cosme steps up in the pocket and makes something out of nothing. Spins his way right into the end zone and once again puts TLU back up by three scores. So the Bulldogs answer the touchdown by the Pirates. You mentioned it, Easton, they're back up again by three scores. With 4.03 left to go, spread out here things on the extra point. And we'll see if they'll bring everybody in. I don't know, maybe they're going for two here. Cole Andrus will take the snap and roll right. He'll run it and looking for the pylon. He'll dive. Will he get there? Yep. Yes, he does. Two-point conversion good by Cole Andrus. That's a formation the Bulldogs have been running on extra points. They've sending all the offensive linemen out to the left side. In the past, everybody came back mm -hmm. towards the middle of the field, but this time they stayed in that formation. Cole Andrus takes the direct <laughs> snap and runs to the pylon, takes it in for the two-point conversion. And they might have been setting that up all night just for that one time to, to choose to pull it out there. They, Like you said, they kind of might have been, they might have just lulled them to sleep a little bit, seeing that formation every time. They thought they were just going to kick the extra point again, but we saw Andrus. That might have been Basenko, the backup quarterback. Either way, the Bulldogs, they punch it in, the two-point conversion. It's 29-7. So was it Caden? Actually, I, I thought I saw number been. nine, but maybe number five kind of, Identical with the numbers, but uh, two-point conversion. Good nonetheless for the Bulldogs. 4.03 left to go here in the third quarter. And now it's 29-7. to And indeed it was Caden Bosenko, the backup quarterback for the Bulldogs. From down the road from Seguin, San Antonio East Central with the two-point conversion. Sophomore. And now it'll be Logan Barnes to tee it off for the Bulldogs on this kickoff. And a great response, too, from TLU. I said that was a big drive upcoming, just following the touchdown from Southwestern. They answer with one of their own, and that was a really long drive, too. They take the momentum back. And Barnes will kick it off. Three men back deep inside the five for the Pirates. Barnes gets a 10-yard start. Going to kick it short. Little pooch. It's going to bounce at the 37, picked up by an up back in. Whistles are going to blow the play dead. I don't know if he signaled for a fair catch. Can you call for a fair catch on a hop? Apparently you can. So the Pirates will take it over there 
at the 36-yard line if that's where they do mark it. But you mentioned it, Easton. Great drive by the Bulldogs. I didn't know you can call for a fair catch on a hop, but they did. I know that guy didn't. <laughs> Whoever returned it, he, he was ready to go make a play. But it was stopped at the 30, 38 right there. So now we'll see um, Gomez back out there. Southwestern try to repeat what they did last time. Yeah, start the second half. Of course, the Bulldogs uh, gave him a short field last time. Here's to give it to a running back. This might be LeBlue. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Like three white shirts swallow him up and push him back. Wow, great defense there. Yeah. Micah Jones, Bulldogs. Micah Jones in there, DJ Lewis as well, all kinds of Bulldogs in and around the football there, and that's no gain on first down. So second down and 10 for the Pirates. Clock is running here, 335 left to go, third quarter. Bulldogs out in front, 29 to 7. Play clock at 15 as Gomez calls out the signals. Second and 10 gets the snap, play fake, back to throw. Now drifting right. Now here comes pressure. He'll run it left, try to take it outside. Takes it across the 40, the 45 far sideline. Outside the numbers, he'll run out of bounds at the TLU 46. And we've got flags in the secondary. I've been a block in the back on that on that scramble from, from Gomez, so I might benefit TLU here. Got the first down, but we'll see about the penalty. It's down at the TLU 47-yard line. Referee getting the explanation from one of the other officials, and he'll come over towards this sideline and address the home crowd here. 314 left to go here, third quarter with the Bulldogs out in front, 29-7. Number three, offense. Senior penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. So wipe out the first down as that block goes on Dugan Sexton. With 3 3.14 left to go here in the third quarter. Bulldogs up 29 to 7. And Southwestern with it. Second down now. And about seven from their own 41. Gomez takes it up the middle across the 45 to the 50. And he's dropped at the TLU 45 yard line. He gets a first down. So Gomez on the quarterback keeper. Faked it to the running back outside. And he gets the first down. First and 10 for the Pirates at their at the TLU 45-yard line. Gomez, shotgun, man in motion in front of him towards the near sideline. He'll take the snap, rolling left. Here's an option. He'll keep it. Hell and it gets off. swallowed up after a gain of about one. Three, blank, or three white jerseys all around him. And, yeah, his helmet did come off, so... Gomez might have to come out for a play here. As he gained a yard. One thing I've noticed, this Bulldog defense, they've kept up the physicality this entire game. I mean, be, even being up 29-7 late in the third, they are still being ultra-physical out there, laying some big hits, and it's second and 10 come, upcoming. Yeah, Gomez does check out with his helmet popping off. Jalen Spriggs, the backup quarterback, runs onto the field. Second down and 10. For the Pirates at the TLU 45-yard line. Now Spriggs in the shotgun. Two wide outs to the right, one to the left. Spriggs gets the snap, gives it to a running back. Blue, juking and jiving, taking it outside across the 45, inside the 40, inside the 35, and he finally gets tackled down at the TLU 33-yard line. That's a first down run by Spriggs. Edwin Rogers making the stop for the Bulldogs as you listen to Bulldog football on KWED Seguin. So first down and 10 for Southwestern. Under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. I've got it at the TLU 32. Gomez checks back in. For the Pirates, gets the snap, rolling right now, stops, will throw deep downfield toward the end zone, and over everybody's head, incomplete. Nearest receiver there was Coleman Robertson, but there were three defensive backs mm -hmm. for the Bulldogs back there with him. Yeah, great coverage of the back end. Thomas Helley back there, as well as, I think, number 29 as well. Oh, both Thomas Helleys were back there, 20 and 29, so the brothers back there on the play, and there was nothing there. Michael and uh, Troy. Troy, a freshman, Michael, a sophomore. 
Second down and 10. Here's to get the blue, and he gets tackled from behind for a loss on the play. Was that Grayson Kowalski? And it might have been number 95, Caleb Hamilton, the freshman. Oh, all right, Caleb that Hamilton. There's a lot of freshmen getting some action here in this one on this defensive side of the ball. So uh, as much veteran leadership that's out there, a lot of freshmen getting mixed in as well, keeping the TLU defense fresh, and it's showing with their performance here tonight. Loss of two on the play. It'll be third and 12 now for the Pirates at the TLU 34-yard line. They're backed up two right now, third and long. Gama's in the gun as we come up on one minute left to go here, third quarter. Running back to his right, fake to blue, throws it towards the left side. This is his H back. This is Jones. He's going to get dragged down at the line of scrimmage. Making the play there for the Bulldogs is Nathan Henson, and I, I believe. I, and I love the pursuit there from the Bulldogs. You saw four TLU defenders get all the way out there, even after the, I think Kowalski was over there as well. Caleb Giles came over and some other guys, so just nonstop effort right now from Henson. this TLU defense. Henson, another freshman out of South Grand Prairie, and it's fourth down. They lost another two yards, fourth and 14. They're yeah, now good. back at the TLU 36-yard line. And they're going to go for it, it looks like. I mean, too long for a field goal, and I mean, you're down three scores. you got to make something happen here. Got five seconds on the play clock. Got to hurry and get this one up. They fumble the snap. Gomez picks it back up. Now he's back to throw. Throws down the middle of the field. Complete at the 20 to a receiver. And down to the 15-yard line. I believe that was Graydon Thompson. Just found a little pocket in that secondary. And despite the fact that Gomez fumbled that ball, had the presence of mind to pick it up, looked downfield and found his receiver, and that will end the third quarter. Just how Southwestern drew it up right there. <laughs> right. Converting on fourth down. We'll head to the fourth with the score, TLU 29, Southwestern 7. It's TLU football on KWED and TLUbulldogs.com. Com. The Kaler Company is a proud sponsor of Texas Lutheran University and the TLU Bulldogs. The Kaler Company provides quality general construction services and fine architectural millwork in Seguin and beyond. The Kaler Company is a name that you can trust. Hi, I'm Steve Kaler. We've been taking care of our customers and their projects since 1954. The Kaler Company wishes the Bulldogs great success on this season. Call the Kaler Company at 830-303-6256. Go! Bulldogs. Lloyd's Brake and Alignment will service and repair your tires, including balancing. Lloyd's does front end repair and wheel alignment. If your vehicle needs brake repair, Lloyd's is a place to go. Lloyd's at 1824 West Kingsbury Street is a continued supporter of the TLU Bulldogs. Lloyd's, with quality service and honest prices, says go Bulldogs. For Lloyd's Brake and Alignment, call 372-5510. That's 372-5510. We start the fourth quarter. Bulldogs out in front, 29 to 7, but the Pirates have it first and 10 at the TLU 15 following a fourth down conversion. Gomez, the quarterback, working shotgun, running back to his left, give to the running back, Blue. Blue it's, he's going to take it up, up the middle, inside the five, into the end zone for a touchdown. He lost the ball, but I think he broke the plane, or did he? And what happens there, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, I think. Is that a safety if there's a fumble out of the back of the end zone? So he fumbled before he broke the plant, so it would be a safety and as the TLU bench is erupting, what celebrating a, here. Yeah. What a swing, too. That, that went from six points for Southwestern to two more for TLU instead. That would be a huge turn of events, and that might seal the deal for this game, too. Well, the officials are getting together at the goal line. Let's see if the running back, LeBlue, broke carrier, the plane. The ball, the ball carrier fumbled the ball. Also, it's a touchback. So no points. Yeah, no point. Yeah, not a safety, but yeah, uh -huh. a touchback. And TLU will take over. Wow. Either way, that's just, I mean, I don't think you need the points for TLU. I think just keeping the Southwestern from getting the seven is huge. And that is. That's, that's, that's the second time they've been denied mm -hmm. deep in TLU territory. Of course, in the first half, Bulldogs had the interception in the end zone. And now LeBlue had that ball knocked out from behind at the one-yard line, rolls through the end zone for a touchback. Can we call that the sixth turnover of the night right there? It is. A change of possession. Yeah. Bulldogs take over. Cosby and Fortone in the backfield. 
Seth gets the snap. Chest high, get to Fortone, up the middle, cross the 20, up to the 24, picked up four yards, and the Bulldogs just want to eat some clock here. So they get the ball here starting the fourth quarter, denying the Pirates at the one-yard line on the fumble out of the end zone. So, again, no hurry for Coach LaHue and the Bulldogs as Cosby looks towards that far sideline for the play. Shotgun, Fortone to his left. Give to Jacob. No, fake to Jacob. And Seth will take it around the left end, across the 35, up to the 34, where he gets stacked up, but he has a first down. And now a little extracurriculars along that far sideline. Standing up for their quarterback. As uh, Seth goes into the sideline, into his bench, and now cooler heads have prevailed. But a first down for Seth Cosby all the way up to the TLU 32-yard line. They'll stop the clock momentarily, move the chains, wind it up again, under 14 minutes to go. Bulldogs up by 22, 29-7. Working from the left hash, Cosby gives the forward tone, goes straight up the middle, trying to bounce off tacklers. He does, takes it through the line into the secondary across the 45, and he's finally dropped at the 50, actually he's throwing the ball. It's Wallace with the completion. I was looking at yeah. Fortone going up the middle and Seth kept the ball again on me and he throws it down the field. Wallace with the reception at the 50 yard line. I'm glad you're not down there playing defense for Southwestern tonight, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking through my binoculars and I didn't see uh, Seth keep the ball away from Jacob. And he did and threw the ball downfield. And now he will give it to his running back. This looks like to Corey on mm. the carry. He will take it across the 50 to the 48-yard line, a gain of a couple. Officially three as they mark it down at the 47. I'm going to put down the binoculars for a moment and try to keep my eye on the ball and keep my eye on Seth Cosme. <laughs> Bulldogs moving the ball well right now and trying to really put a, put the nail in the coffin on this game. Already leading 29-7. I think one more score right here likely would Can, can it. ice it, yes. Yeah. For the Bulldogs as they Get the play with 10 seconds to go on the play clock. 12.42 on the game clock. Second and seven at the Pirate. 47. Cosby throws out in the flat complete on the right side. This is Andrus. He goes out of bounds at around the 41-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Third down and one coming up. Stops the clock. 12.34 to go here in the fourth quarter. Corey Willis checks back in to the ball game. Klosterman lined up here to the near side on the right side. Patek in the slot on the left. And Yawa Nathan McKenzie wide out far to the left side for the Bulldogs. Third down and one. Seven seconds on the play clock. Down to five as Cosme gets the snap. Gives to his running back. A little host Willis. He will bowl over a defender and take it all the way down to the 35-yard line with a first down. Strong first down run there from Willis. Just bouncing off tacklers. And he gets a pretty good gain out of it. So first and 10 inside the 35. Bulldogs moving right down the field. And DeCorey will check out. Weston Guzman will check back in. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. At the Pirate 34-yard line. Again, taking their time here. We're down to 11.45. This drive started at their own 20-yard line following the turnover in the end zone by the Pirates. Man of motion in front of Cosby. Jet sweep. It's Patek around the left end inside the 30, inside the 25, dragging a tackler all the way down to the 14-yard line. Chase Patek coming in motion in front of his quarterback on the jet sweep. Takes it around the left end. Another first down for the Bulldogs. They're at the Pirate 12. They move the sticks. Wind the clock, 11.20 and counting. Another nice drive here by the Bulldogs. Started at their own 20, like we mentioned. Shotgun with Cosme. Running back to his left. Give to the running back. This is Guzman. He'll plow into the line and push forward down to the 10 with a gain of two. Bulldogs trying to inch their way closer into the end zone. Looking for touchdown number five on the evening. If they can get it. And like you said, probably ice this game here with one more score already up by three scores. Jacob Fortone is checked back in. So as Eugene Robinson, Cole Andrus out there, far out to the left is Wallace. 
Cosby in the gun, 10 seconds on the play clock, gets the snap, throws it into the end zone, Faye pattern for Wallace, and defender there, and flags come down. This is going to be pass interference on Southwestern. Yeah, O'Connell can't believe it. He wasn't looking back at no. the ball as Wallace went up for that fade pattern in the back left corner of the end zone. And the flags fly past interference on the Pirates. It'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs. Just a one-on-one -on -one fade route and I, pretty good effort there from O'Connell as Wallace is giving him trouble all night. But So first and goal at the two. For the Bulldogs is Weston Guzman checks back in. Jacob Fortone out there. And it'll be a pistol with Fortone behind Cosby. Snap. Here's a give to Jacob. Trying to get around the right side. Fighting and diving and into the end zone for the touchdown Bulldogs. Jacob Fortone just a little extra effort there to get in the end zone. His second touchdown of the evening. And that might have just put the icing on the cake for this TLU Bulldog offense. Extends it to a four score a game with 10-24 left to go. And here comes that strange formation on the extra point attempt. Most of the offensive linemen lined up far to the left and Caden Basenko, the quarterback, there in the shotgun. Now they will come back to the center of the field and Basenko will hold here for the kicker, Rodriguez. Rodriguez, right footed kicker. Senior, here's the snap, ball placed down by Pasenko. Line drive is true. 10-24 left to go here in the fourth. Texas Lutheran, 36, Southwestern, 7. This is TLU football at KWED and TLUBulldogs.com. Bulldogs.com. Does TR... Regional Medical Center, Advanced Medicine, Personal Touch. And the Bulldogs will kick it off up 36 to 7. Logan Barnes with the kick. Yeah, this is a high short kick, fair catch called for at the five yard line. And the Pirates will take it over at their own 25, 80-yard drive there by the Bulldogs. They have 418 total yards of offense tonight. Seth Cosby having a great game as well for the Bulldogs. He's 23 of 30 for 250 yards. A couple of touchdown runs by Jacob Fortone on the night. He has 56 yards on the ground on 15 carries. And the Bulldogs... With 10-24 left to go in this one, have a four-score lead. First and 10 for the Pirates at their own 25-yard line. Gomez, the quarterback, give it to a running back. Big hole on the right side. No, oh, it's a play fake. Throw down the middle of the field, and it is in and out of the hands of Graydon Thompson, defender there for the Bulldogs, incomplete. Another play action fake there is Gomez. You've seen him all second half. Haven't seen Spriggs back in there since the end of the first. Try to fit the ball in the tight window there and unable to make the catch. Both quarterbacks for the Pirates with two interceptions on the night. Gomez 7 of 14, 59 yards. Spriggs 9 of 12 for 112. Here's a snap back to Gomez. Back to the throw. Here comes pressure. It's going to step up and be tackled at the line of scrimmage. Brought down. Big sack there. Has, haven't seen too many sacks or tackles for loss from the TLU defense despite how solid they've played, but making a play there in the backfield. Well, that looked like that was Nathan Henderson on the sack. Well, actually got back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain, third down and 10. 
Pirates at their own 25. Gomez shotgun. Here's com here comes pressure. He'll throw it near sideline over the hands of his intended receiver. That ball was deflected by defender for the Bulldogs, but it falls incomplete. And Jamario Thomas is almost there for his third pick as he was close to getting the tipped interception right there. Cole Anderson with the deflection. So the Pirates go three and out here, and the punt team comes on to the field. Nice, stop, nice quick stop there for the TLU defense to make sure Southwestern can't find some late game momentum as under 10 minutes now to go, and TLU just trying to wrap this thing up right now. So Fournier back at his 10 to receive the snap, gets it, gets the punt away. It's a short kick end under end. Might have gone off the side of his foot as it bounces at the 42-yard line of Southwestern. It just rolls to the 46 and falls dead. Ball will be down at the pirate, so another possession for this TLU offense. Maybe a chance to see some backups now. I don't know if how we'll comfortable see. Coach LeHue feels at this point in the game. but Maybe Caden Basenko, yeah. the East Central product, will come into the ball game. Seth Cosby, we, went, we mentioned 23 of 30, 250 yards. Three rushing touchdowns tonight. Jacob Fortone with the other two. And yeah, let's see who's coming in. Now Seth is still going to stay in there here with 929 left to go. Maybe one more drive for Seth yeah. here. And you still got to get a, a lot of reps. I mean, this is only week two, so I'm not too surprised here to see the one still in the ballgame. Split backs with him, and now Willis goes out in motion towards the far side. Give to Guzman around the left corner inside the 40 to the 25, the 20 along the far sideline, 10. And is he into the end zone or is he out of bounds? Might have stepped out a little bit early, Out of bounds. But there is a flag back there as well. Back at the 30. So Guzman high-stepping as he got outside. But holding is the call on the Bulldogs, and they'll bring it back. That might have been the best run of the night, too, that just gets called back there as Guzman found a nice lane down that left sideline. But they'll bring it back. So now in the 9-19, Bulldogs just want to run this out. Head back down Highway 130 to Seguin. Get ready for next week. Home opener at Bulldog Stadium. They'll make it two in a row over the Pirates. They won here last year, last November. Last second score by Jacob Fortone won the ball game. So this holding was downfield, so they mark it at the 41-yard line. First and five. You have to running back up the middle. I think this is Guzman. He's dragging tacklers with him as he takes the ball to the 35-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down. He may have it. Yes, he will. And like you mentioned with Fortone with that great game last, last season, that was actually the Bulldogs' last win of the year. Late in the year, they played Southwestern on the road. And picking up where they left off, they really like playing here, I guess. And A lot less exciting of a matchup this one, but it's just been total domination on all th in all three phases for TLU. A real complete game in week two. That's all you can ask for if you're Coach LeHue and the Bulldog coaching staff. Yeah, executing game plan perfectly here tonight. Uh, getting some turnovers defensively. Doing well offensively as well. Jackson Bennett, new running back in for the Bulldogs. And it's a give to Bennett. Left side, takes it back to the line of scrimmage and then gets stood up. Maybe a gain of one. Clock continues the rolls. We come down to eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And now it looks like we're going to see Basenko come in the game for Cosme here. Caden Basenko, the sophomore out of San Antonio East Central. Got some action last week in the game up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So he'll come in here with 7.45 left to go in the fourth quarter. And the Bulldogs well out in front, 36-7. Caden in the shotgun, running back. I believe that's Jackson to his left. Gets the snap, give to Jackson, stutter steps, takes to the line of scrimmage, and plows forward down to the 31-yard line. Just a little handoff here to get him, get him comfortable. We saw Pasenko on that two-point conversion look good as well, fighting in for those couple of points, and now some really valuable reps these last seven minutes for a lot of these Bulldog backups. They've traveled 80 guys this week from Seguin, so a lot of guys with a chance to get some good run in down the stretch. Jackson Bennett out of Rockwell, Texas, and now we see ne Nehemiah Murray check in. Freshman out of Luling. He'll line up in the backfield. Play fake. And Basenko going to air it out. Far sideline and caught inside the five-yard line and out of bounds. Back shoulder grab there 
That's a new receiver in the ball game. Can't see the number. Do you see it there? I, might have been, oh, I thought it was 17, but there's not a 17 on the roster for me. So, so a new, a new uh, unnamed receiver as Coach LeHue empties his bench. He goes out of bounds at the four-yard line. Nice throw by Caden Basenko. Mm -hmm. And it's first and goal for the Bulldogs. Running back Nehemiah Murray in the backfield with Basenko out of the shotgun. Two wide outs right, one to the left. Give to Murray. No, fake to Murray. Throwing the flat. And this one too hard for the intended target as Basenko fired a laser to his receiver out in the flat, trying to get the numbers on these players. That's Jaden Meyer. Or Jared Meyer, I should say. This is the part of the broadcast where we're trying to <laughs> just We were trying to avoid. We were hoping for, for a close game, but we knew <laughs> if it was going to be a blowout. You said they brought 80 players here, so we're going to see uh, a lot of them here. How many buses did they bring here to Georgetown? <laughs> At least two. Two, yeah. <laughs> All right, second and goal for the Bulldogs at the four. Yeah, this is a running back. I think that's Jackson. He takes it inside the five down to the three. And he gets stood up. So it'll be third and goal as they officially mark it at the two-yard line. And the clock comes up on six minutes to go, third and goal. Bulldogs up 36 to seven. Basenko, shotgun, looks towards the sideline with 15 seconds on the play clock. Bennett is the running back to his right. Third and goal. Here's the snap. And a give to Bennett, he's wrapped up. No, it's actually Basenko going right. And he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage back at the six yard line. So uh, fake to the running back, Bennett to the left and Basenko tries to go around the right side. He loses three and it's fourth and goal back at the six. We see the field goal team come out of offense staying on the field right now. Almost five minutes left. Coach will might use a timeout here. As We're down to 15 on the play clock. Coming up on five minutes to go in the ball game on the game clock. Fourth quarter, NTLU 36 and Southwestern 7. And you mentioned it, Easton. It looks like the Bulldogs going to call a timeout here and talk about a play call maybe here on fourth and six as 4.56 remains in this ball game. And I'm trying to look at the roster here. We don't, they don't even have it here online, number 17, who made that catch earlier. But Caden Basenko in relief of Seth Cosby, who's Night is finished. He went 23 of 30 for 250 yards. Caden so far, one of two, 29 yards. And when we come back from this timeout, Bulldogs will have it. Fourth and goal at the Southwestern six yard line. And our next TLU football broadcast, the home opener at Bulldog Stadium in Seguin next Saturday against Ave Maria, 6 p.m. kickoff, 5.30 pregame here on AM 1580 KWED and streaming at TLUBulldogs.com. And now they will line up for a field goal outside, uh, after this timeout. This will be a 22-yard attempt by Rodriguez, right-footed kicker. With the boot, and he splits the uprights with this one, and the Bulldogs add to their lead at 454. Left to go. It's now TLU 39 and Southwestern 7, so get some special teams work in and Rodriguez now one of two. as well putting points on the board here uh, they will improve to one and one it's all academic just four minutes and 54 seconds need to tick off this clock and it's Logan Barnes 
ready to tee it up and kick this one off here. Bulldogs white on white tonight, road whites, tidy whiteies, and the Pirates in all black. A couple of black and gold teams going at it. Bulldogs saw a black and gold team last week in Wisconsin Oshkosh. It's pretty po popular colors yeah. for college teams in D3. A fair catch is called for at the goal fair line by Bartlett. And first and 10, it'll be for the Pirates at their own 25-yard line. First broadcast of the season. We didn't make the trip to Oshkosh. Not. Yeah, Oshkosh last week, but the football team made it. And uh, we will be back next week, as we mentioned, at home for the very first time at Bulldog oh. Stadium. I got an update from Bryce. It was Jameer Nichols who caught that pass, number 17. So we have a name to it now. So Jameer with Thank a nice you. catch inside the five earlier. We have a name now. Thank you. Thank you to our sports information director. While he's taking pictures, we'll, we'll add. He's multitasking down there. Bryce Hayes on the... Uh, on the call, and here's a gift to a running back on the first down play for the uh, Pirates up the middle for a couple of yards. And Gomez still out there as the quarterback for the Pirates. And they too just want to get this game mm -hmm. over with. 454 total yards wow. of offense tonight for the You, you combine Bulldogs. that with six turnovers, you're not, you're not going to lose too many games. All right. 29 first downs. Can't ask for much more. Second and eight for Southwestern. Up the middle, running back, takes it to the 30-yard line. Stacked up there after a gain of three. So we come up on four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs up 39-7. to seven. Now we have an injured player down on the field for TLU. Looks like cramps, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, just player getting. I can't see the number, but he's getting his leg, his left leg stretched out there. Shout out to, to Caleb Hamilton. He looked. He was, he was stretching him out first before the trainers even got out there, helping, <laughs> his, helping his teammate out. <laughs> Maybe a future trainer, perhaps. I don't know what he's studying. <laughs> Maybe. He looked like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> so Bulldogs just uh, playing this one out here tonight. We'll go home back to Seguin, a winner. Just got to wait for these final four minutes and three seconds to to uh, tick off the clock here. Here at Burkle Backfield in Georgetown tonight as a uh, player gets to his feet. as number 58, and that's another number we don't have. Maybe, <laughs> but he gets maybe up. Bryce heard that. He's going to text me in like a couple <laughs> seconds. We'll get that. Yeah. See how, we're going to time him, see how fast he gets it up here. <laughs> Start the clock now. <laughs> All right. So third down and five as that player makes his way to the sideline, kind of limps off towards the far sideline. And here's the snap to the quarterback, Gomez. Here's an option running right. Has the first down across the 35, across the 40, and tackled at the 42 yard line. Pirates move the sticks. They stop the clock. 350 left to go. And now they wind it up. Clock's still moving right now. And you just want it to keep moving. <laughs> keep moving. Let's get out of here. Get on both those buses. Head back to Seguin. Get ready for Ave Maria next week. Home opener. We had, some, we had some packed vans, too. We, we traveled with the cheerleading That's squad right. today. So <laughs> it's a full house everywhere. Yes, it is. Not everybody made the trip to Wisconsin last week. Oh, here's a fumble on the snap. And Gamas just falls on it way back at his own 35-yard line. Lost seven on that. It's a good time, too, for all these TLU defenders. We saw we called lots of freshmen's names earlier in this ball game. I'm sure, majority of freshmen out there now as well. So. Well, they, they had enough players on the sideline mm -hmm. to field four teams yeah. tonight, didn't they? Yeah, plenty, plenty, plenty of opportunities <laughs> for some players, that's for sure. Something like that, yeah. They all didn't make the trip, the plane ride up to Oshkosh last week. I guess they flew into Milwaukee, I'm, maybe? I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, for that one. They brought around 60 to 70, I'm pretty sure, for that game. So a few more in with the closer trip. I think this is the closest road game we'll have all season, too. There's a running back up the middle, big holds LeBlu across the 40, 45 to midfield, the 50 still on his feet. He's to the 40 Turnover. and finally brought down at the TLU 34-yard line. 
Did he lose the ball? TLU signaling that No, they, he lost they, the ball. Someone poked the ball <laughs> out, and TLU comes up with it. At this point, we should just assume that we got the turnover. That's Is <laughs> that, that number seven? Seven times, and uh, Gabriel Shepard. With the fumble two, recovery. Two fumbles, four interceptions, and then now we got, then we had the, the change of possession touchback as well. Yeah, had the ball knocked out from uh, LeBlou, LeBlou's hands at the one-yard line and then punched mm -hmm. through the end zone. That ended up being a touchback. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier a couple times where the Pirates had the ball deep in TLU territory and came up empty-handed both times with the interception in the end zone in the first half and that ball knocked out of the end zone in the second. So final 2.29. In front of us here as Busenko comes out. I think it one last drive as well. And we got whistles on the snap and movement along the line for TLU. So this one just about over. I know you're watching that game in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. Got an update on that one between the Longhorns and the Crimson yeah, Tide. Texas little late fourth quarter surge. They're up 34-24 right now with the ball with about five minutes left. So they might actually pull it off, pull off the upset. Here's a give up the middle to the running back. I'm thinking that's Jackson. Yes, it is. It gets it up to the 33-yard line. Going to bring up a second down and 13 for the Bulldogs as we come up on two minutes to go here in this one at Burkle backfield. Paseco, the quarterback, and Jackson to his right. Takes out of the shotgun. Jackson around the left end, across the 30, up to the 35. Still going, Still going along that far sideline. He finally gets tripped up at the 42-yard line. Going to be about seven yards short of the first down. It's going to bring up a third down and seven. Clock stops. Now they wind it. 139 left to go. Nice little run there from Bennett. Trying to earn some more playing time, and he might with that run right there. Is, it's always good to see these guys lower on the depth chart get some get some shine in these final minutes here in these blowout games. So a lot of valuable reps and opportunities for these guys right now. Jackson Bennett, Jr. from Rockwell, Texas, out of the DFW area. So third and, third and seven for the Bulldogs at their own 40. Play fake to Jackson. Basenko going to take it around the left end across the 40, and he'll fall forward to the 45, close to the sticks, but it'll be a couple yards shy as the clock now under a minute to go to be fourth and two. Bulldogs will get their first win of the season, and the Pirates will fall to 0-2. We, we hadn't mentioned it yet, but a lot of black and gold in the on the other side of the mm -hmm. field in the stands here at Burkle Backfield, making the trip up here to Georgetown tonight. Pretty, good to see. Pretty good crowd. We got one lone TLU flag, too, up top. So shout out yeah. to that fan. Yeah, the wind has start, uh, started to whip around here as, as it's Paseco around the left end on fourth down. He has the first down across the 50 and down to the 46, and the Bulldogs won't have to run another play here. This will do it. So we've got an injured Clock pirate up. down on the field as – they will wind the clock, or are they going to stop it here? They're going to stop it with 17 seconds here, so hold it. Not quite yet done here in Georgetown tonight. As, we, uh, as the uh, trainer is going to attend to that injured player for the Pirates. And it's uh, number eight, which is the quarterback uh, quarterback's number on offense, but it's Aiden O'Donnell on defense who wears number eight. Still in the ballgame. He's the starting cornerback for the Pirates injured on the play, and he's being attended to along that, uh, well, in front of the TLU bench on the far side of the field, and Aiden gets up, and he'll he'll walk off the field. He'll be fine. So I don't know if the Bulldogs will have to run a play here. They'll just wind the clock here. 17 seconds to go. People here in the press box start emptying. Yeah. Now we got some VIP loges <laughs> next to us, and they're shutting out the lights. We're Party's still, over. We're still here, though. We're, we're <laughs> celebrating this one. Yes, we are. Enemy, be celebrating. Enemy, ter enemy territory. Celebrating all the way back down uh, the highway, the toll road back to Seguin tonight. Bryce Hayes got us here in an hour. See how, <laughs> how, fast, see, you see how fast he'll take it. He'll get us back to Seguin tonight. The, the uh, Bulldogs will not have to run a final play. They'll run out the clock 
and TLU will win this one tonight here in Georgetown. The final, Texas Lutheran 39 and Southwestern 7 will take our final timeout, wrap things up just ahead. You're listening to TLU Bulldog Football on KWED and TLUBulldogs.com. Bulldogs.com. Taylor Tree Farm, a family business in Seguin, Texas, specializes in locally grown trees. Their farm is teeming with native oaks of all kinds, plus cedar elms and desert willows. Ranging from 1 to 30 gallons, they've got trees of all sizes. Each tree is nurtured from locally gathered acorns and seeds that are germinated and grown in their greenhouse until they're ready for transfer. At Taylor Tree Farm, they're not just growing trees, they're growing your future green spaces. Visit AylorsTreeFarm.com to learn more. Established in 1947, CMC Steel Texas was Commercial Metal Company's first mini mill. Through continuous upgrades and technology improvements, CMC Steel Texas has evolved into a world class, state of the art steel mini mill that ships products globally and is capable of producing a broad range of shapes, merchant bar, and special bar quality products in many grades. When dealing with CMC Steel Texas, you get more than a steel manufacturer. You get personalized service from a group of steel professionals who take pride in the products that they produce and sell. CMC Steel Texas, your partner for success. Anders Pierce Realty knows this area about as well as anyone. From Seguin to New Braunfels to San Antonio or San Marcos, their expertise has proven invaluable for their clients. Anders Pierce Realty is here for all your real estate needs. They can help whether your interest lies with a house, lot, acreage, ranch, farm, office, warehouse, storage, or anything else. They'll do their best to ensure that you are satisfied with all your real estate needs. Learn more today. Visit AndersPierce.com. That's AndersPierce.com. Davalos Barbecue has been providing quality eats for Seguin since 1959. Grilling and smoking choice cuts of meat to the perfect level of tenderness is their business. The sausage is homemade, the ribs fall off the bone, and, well, the peach cobbler is the perfect ending to any meal. You can find Davalos Barbecue on Kingsbury Street near Guadalupe Street. But did you also know that you can find Davalos Barbecue on Facebook and Twitter or visit their website at davalosbbq.com? Hey, boss, you got a minute? Sure, come on in. You working on another radio jingle? No. You got a good idea for one? Well, actually, I do. Thought we'd tell the good people about all the pests we control, like ants, roaches, spiders, scorpions, silverfish, mice, termites, rats, and bed bugs. Remember, Angel Pest Control. We'll get those little devils online at angelpest.com. And for social content, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The Kaler Company is a proud sponsor of Texas Lutheran University and the TLU Bulldogs. The Kaler Company provides quality general construction services and fine architectural millwork in Seguin and beyond. The Kaler Company is a name that you can trust. Hi, I'm Steve Kaler. We've been taking care of our customers and their projects since 1954. The Kaler Company wishes the Bulldogs great success on this season. Call the Kaler Company at 830-303-6256. Go Bulldogs! And it is a final here at Birkenbach Field tonight in Georgetown. Texas Lutheran Bulldogs knock off the Southwestern Pirates by a final of 39-7. to seven. Chris Austin along with Easton Allen here. Wrapping things up in Georgetown tonight, 477 total yards of offense by TLU. Seth Cosby, 250 yards through the air. He ran for three touchdowns. Your former high school teammate, Easton Jacob Wallace, nine catches, 122 yards, and then the defense played well here tonight as well. Yeah, like we've been saying all night, complete game from the Bulldogs, 39-7, total domination. And, I mean, I keep I keep reiterating this. This is the best they've looked since I've been here, since Bryce has been here. So, I mean, this is an exciting time for TLU football. They, the, How active they were through all, all four quarters, even when they had the big lead, the, there was no let up from this team. So, Coach LeHue and this whole coaching staff has got to be feeling really confident going into conference play here pretty soon. Yeah, they got the momentum there in the first half, had the four turnovers, four interceptions, got that 21-7 lead going into the lot or 21 nothing lead going into the locker room. Then early on here in the second half, had that miscue on special teams mm -hmm. where they snapped the ball over Cameron, uh, uh, the punter Cameron Welch's head, and, and yeah. the uh, Pirates got the ball first and goal at the five, scored a touchdown, but they answered that yeah. with, a, with a long drive after that. I was going to say, that might have been the only – miscue or bad play of the night that I could remember is that is that bad snap on the punt and that's 
might have been the only reason Southwestern was able to get their points because without that missed nap, we might be right. looking at a shutout. So defense was phenomenal. Special teams had, besides that one miscue, was really solid. He made some field goals, great punts, kick coverage, all that. And then the offense, Seth Cosme, I'll tell you what, all night you know, he was getting you for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I was the, getting with confused. The, with the fakes and, and – <laughs> Confusing the defense, confusing un, us, yeah. confusing R- everybody. The RPOs, the play actions, it, it all look good. Cosme looks so comfortable under year two with Coach LeHue in this offense. He's got all the weapons to be successful too. So, TLU Bulldogs looking real good right now. And they'll be in action uh, one week from tonight, the home opener over at Bulldog Stadium taking on Ave Maria. Of course, we'll have it for you here on KWED. That's going to do it for us here. In Georgetown tonight, thank you so much, Easton. I know it's uh, it's a good night for you because not only do the uh, TLU Bulldogs win, but uh, your your uh, Texas yep, Longhorns they do. got to win too in Tuscaloosa tonight. It's a win-win tonight, absolutely. So the uh, Bulldogs win here, and the Longhorns win there in Tuscaloosa. So a good night for Easton Allen. Easton, we'll see you next week, my yes, friend. Sir. Again, the uh, Bulldogs take it here over the former ASC conference uh, rivals, the Southwestern. Pirates, the final, TLU 39 and Southwestern 7. Again, our next broadcast one week from tonight, home opener over at Bulldog Stadium in Seguin. TLU and Ave Maria will have it for you. 6 o'clock kickoff, 5.30 pregame on AM 1580, KWED, and streaming at tlubulldogs.com. It'll be a happy bus ride for the two buses back to Seguin tonight. As the Bulldogs get the win in Georgetown, they're headed back to Seguin 1-1 one and one on the season. want to say thanks to our studio engineer, Jared Kindles, back at the KWED studios, Nick Trumbull, and the film crew here at TLUBulldogs.com. And, of course, Bryce Hayes, the sports information director at Texas Lutheran University. Again, TLU over Southwestern tonight, 39-7 to for my broadcast partner, Easton Allen. I'm Chris Austin saying so long from Georgetown, Texas. And have a good night, everybody. Everybody.